Good morning. Good morning. It's Friday, April 19th. I can't believe we are this this far into April. It it's mind-boggling to me that we are that we are here. I can't believe it. Today we are streaming because I was waiting to see what was going on with jury selection in the Karen Reed trial, but there's some new things that happened that we're going to cover before that trial gets underway in evidence next week. We're going to talk about it, I'm sure. So, Today, we need to talk about Baldwin getting a new special prosecutor. We need to talk about Koberger's alibi. There's a bunch of other Koberger filings that look like they just hit um, this morning because I did not see them last night when I was prepping. So there is, um, there's a new motion that I think we'll be able to go over. It'll just be a first look because, again, didn't see those last night. We're going to do that today and just see what it is. But alibi first and then new filings. And I've got a, a follow-up on Crumble versus Dirty Dough, and I'm going to do a bit more q and I had to, like, yeet myself out of the chat earlier uh, this week because I was late for an appointment. So we haven't gotten to do a lot of Q&A. So we're going to do a Q&A that kind of covers the topics for today, upcoming topics, and all of that stuff. My power also went out this morning, so that was an adventure. I had intended to go down to Georgia. There are federal oral arguments going on in the Chrisley appeals today. What I did not realize is that one of my kiddos has a in-service day from school. So um, co couldn't, well, chose not to take him to Georgia with me to go sit in federal court because I don't feel that I would be able to pay attention while trying to wrangle a child that is not going to love sitting in federal court listening to oral arguments. That's not a good experience for anyone, including him. Um, so here we are today. I'm going to have to rely on reporting. Fingers crossed. I hope that the reporting is clear on what happens in those oral arguments. There is no way to um, to attend those remotely. So sometimes the family stuff happens and it just happens because uh, I didn't even, um, he his school day off changed this week. It's a whole scheduling kerfuffle. So it was supposed to be Monday and then it and in service day changed and then life happens mom life happens and things happen so here we are um but i know you guys understand what that's like and we do the best that we can so i will swing back to the reporting i'm going to look at multiple outlets if i can i'm interested to see what savannah chrisley has to say and we will we will see what we can piece together from oral arguments. I really want to know what the judges were asking. Often the questions give you a lot of insight, which we saw with the TikTok psychic this week, didn't we? And then we will um, we will talk about what's coming up for the next week or the next eight weeks. So I see a lot of you saying, um, love choosing mom over career. Look, there were a lot of days I didn't have the choice. There were a lot of a lot of years where I didn't have the choice to be in court or not. And so I now have created a world where I have that choice and I did that on purpose. And I always keep that in mind. And there is always room to navigate that, sometimes better than others. But today I could navigate streaming for a few hours while he is hanging and then I could, um, and then I can get back to doing stuff with the fam. So that is is the choice for today again there were lots of years where i didn't have that choice and i tried to build a life where i can make that choice because i can i couldn't in the past and i get that there's definitely times where you can't make those choices so i get it i get it um so for all of you that are like i could have gone it's okay we will get reporting out of court it is fine it is fine it is fine so we will we will get to it we will circle back to that case we have a lot of pending cases and it's hard when the adhd attention is pulled sometimes to new to circle back so i am still pushing myself to circle back because i'm very interested in trial very we're going to talk about that so we're going to do a longer q a today we're going to go through the topics we have um I have a few little bits and bobs that we'll talk about, and then we'll do deeper dives into them later. And that's what we're doing today. So chat, it's casual Friday. 
let's just enjoy a casual Friday. Later today, uh, Rob over at Law & Lumber will be streaming a celebratory stream for a channel milestone, I believe for 200K. He has some very interesting things to talk about. Um, so I think that that will be interesting. If you want to pop over there, you may or may not see your friend EDB pop in. It's just going to depend on what's going on with family stuff, but I will make time when I will pop in. I don't know, but I will make time to pop in and go have an ADHD, um, squiggly conversation with Rob and Ian. They are the best. It is always good to see them. Um, not enough lawyers talk about being neurodivergent. Something about the internet makes it easier for lawyers to be like, and this is the other aspect of my life. You see from Rob and Ian, they both talk about their other creative outlets. I find that lots of lawyers have a lot of creative outlets and don't always talk about their creative outlets and feel like being a lawyer kind of takes over your whole personality. So I'm really excited to go Popeye and celebrate 200,000 subscribers for my friend. And he has some really interesting stuff to share with you about a former boss of his that got disbarred. Like, man's like, so we're going to spill the tea on what happened here. And I'm like, oh, I'm here for tea to be spilt. And um, I always love chatting about what it is like being neurodivergent in a profession. I think it's helpful to those of you who are neurodivergent, those of you who were diagnosed late in life, especially those of you who didn't like fit the profile and so they were like ah no you're fine and you're like i swear i'm not fine though and they're like you're fine um and so you got diagnosed later in life for those of you that got misdiagnosed and started peeling the layers back on the onion and we're like but wait there's more <laughs> but wait there's more you like tackle the one neurodivergence and then and then the onion keeps peeling back you're like oh well now that we've handled this they keep springing up we keep finding new things which is illuminating as a human but it's nice to get to chat about not enough people chat about it and for those of you um who look at your kids who have been diagnosed and are like what does the future hold everything the future holds everything i was chatting with i'm also gonna remind me to tell you a really really ridiculous story about me and my teen yesterday but i was talking to him about how excited i was for him to enter a world where he can modify his environment more than than in years past between technology and understanding like the amount of customization even on state testing the amount of customization that my kid has on like what that looks like um the type of fonts that are being used so he can read it better like the amount of technology and assistive technology that people aren't just looking at it and it's like oh well if you're visually impaired there's assistive technology or if you are hearing impaired there's assistive technology there is so much assistive technology to help all of our different neuro spiciness and i think it's incredible to let kids and and kids to have the ability to modify their work environments their their digital environments so that things are accessible in a very different way than they were and so with like the ups and downs of technology, there's good and there's bad, but I love getting to see how they um, have those doors opened for them. And I continue to encourage him to be like, okay, well, if this doesn't work, try that. And if this doesn't work, try that. And all of those suggestions from me come from my experience and from talking to other people who all have different types of neuro spiciness. And you know, it it makes me feel so much better when Runkle's also talking about, no, I've got like a video game, a movie and a book going on at the same time while I'm working because like the other squirrels in my brain need to have something to play with. So I just give them things to do. And then like the other part of my brain can focus. And I'm like, oh, I do that too. But it doesn't help if your parents are like, you can't watch TV while studying. It's like, I can't actually study without some other stimulus. Like I need, like the hamster wheel needs a soundtrack so that I can focus. I need to let it go play by itself so I can focus. And so it's really, those conversations I think are so important, but with neurodivergence and neurospiciness and a lot of, a lot of other things, I think sometimes shame keeps us from having those conversations openly. And I'm too old to have shame over the fact that my brain works differently. Like what? No, like my brain works differently. Okay. 
it's like driving a different car. It's like, I'm not going to have any shame because I drive this car or that car. It's just like, it's the vehicle. The brain is just on a different operating system. Some of y'all are on the same operating system with me. It's delightful. Some of y'all are in different operating systems. I'm not going to have shame about that. Some people are Mac people. Some people are Windows people. Some people are Linux. Some people are Unix. Some people are like, I have a hybrid operating system with 37 different tabs open and four different like RAM modules. Awesome. Great. All different operating systems. And there is no shame to that. It's like feeling shame around like your height. It just, it is. I'm not going to be ashamed of what is. It is. So I'm going to talk about it. You guys can choose. You guys can choose. DOS. Some of us are Nikki Canyons is like DOS. Yes. Some. Someone's on DOS. <laughs> I think my youngest is probably on DOS. <laughs> He's very, it's very, it's very linear um, with that brain. So with all of it, we um we are just we are just going to have those conversations. And that's what I I love doing. So remember, you have the power to modify your environment more than we ever have we more than we ever have and some of those things are set up for people whose brain works one way um i hate the whiteboards in school like the blackboards worked for me the chalkboards worked for me but those white smart boards give me a migraine the second i look at them even those types of things people don't always think about and i hope the more we talk about it the more they'll think about it and be like oh the smart boards need a dark mode for all of the people who staring at a white board with black lettering makes their brain scream internally all day long because i can't pay attention if my brain is like everything is too bright stop it and then the conversations just help so let's continue to have conversations that help i don't how did we get there i don't know oh because i'm talking with robin ian later <laughs> so modify the world to work for you speaking of which i'm gonna have to call dr b and be like hey i know the power uh went off and i am pretty sure that the what didn't come back was the air conditioning because now i'm starting to sweat <laughs> so i'm gonna have to bust out the fan in a minute um with all of that i'm gonna run the intro i'm glad to see you what did i say we were talking about today we are talking about baldwin's new special prosecutor Koberger, documents and alibi We'll talk about the read trial that's popping off next week. We'll talk about the internet a little bit. We'll answer lots of questions. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Linda D. It's dark mode. It's not a phase, mom. Um, see, and and still just like, I hate dark mode because it makes the letters swim. That's how I feel when I look at things that are on a white background. So yes, and that's the that's the beauty of it is being able to to pick which one works for your brain. When I look at things that are white, I can't always see the letters. I see like the spaces in between the letters are too like hyper dominant and it makes it very, very hard for me to read. Uh, anyway, so let's roll. We're just having a casual Friday up in here, up in here. I have, have some water. I'll tell you the song that's been stuck in my head for four days. Um, and will remind me later when we get into Q and A, I'll tell you a story about me and T and, uh, Mm -hmm. I think I might have to pull the video up that I'm talking about. I'm going to have to text him. Okay, so there will be enough time for him to answer. <laughs> Perfect. We're planning as we go, people. We're planning as we go. Lonard, let me know where you're coming in from, what you're drinking. Hey there, I'm Emily D. Baker, the internet's go-to legal analyst, breaking down the legal side of the pop culture and entertainment stories we can't stop talking about. I'm a big fan of the cursey words. I've been a licensed attorney for over 17 years, but this is not legal advice. This is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not <laughs> Let's get into it. Okay, y'all. I see, No, Chad, I see you. Yes, it is. It is Taylor Swift new album day. Some of you were up for new album day when the day started. Um, I have not had a chance. I have not had a chance. Honestly, this week has been uh a ch this week has been challenging for emily there's been a lot going on just stuff it is the spring is so busy <laughs> so stuff has been stuffing um every like not in a bad way just in a busy emily's kind of overextended and grumpy kind of a way uh which happens about every 30 ish days 
So tomorrow I will be less grumpy. Today I am all of the grumpy. Like I get it. I know I see it's a double album. I am going to Taylor Swift it up this weekend. I have a long drive ahead of me tomorrow. I've got an Erlen appointment to look at my lenses. I've got some new glasses. I'm excited. We've got like good stuff is happening. Busy stuff is happening. So I'm, I'm, I know tons of you are excited. Look, a new album drop is a really exciting thing. What I love and chat, some of you might be Swifties. Some of you might not be Swifties. I get it. But what I love is the community um, that people have. And whether music is my music or not my music, I love a community that gets together and is excited for each other and is diving in. Love it. Love it. Love it. So love it. Love it. So anyway, I am, I am trying not to be too spicy today, but I'll be spicy. Um, I see you guys, Smurf Anna, I see you asking about Erlen. I'm going to save it till we get to Q and A and we will, I will talk about it. Look, we're not here to gatekeep. <laughs> we're here to tell you all the things and I'll tell you what that is. Um, so all of the rest of it, what did I say we were talking about first? Baldwin. We're talking about Baldwin first. Um, I'm going to go to the AP news story about this first because it gives some background on the new special prosecutor. Um, this Valkyrie art said, Emily, when isn't it a busy season for you? Fall is busy. Winter is busy. Spring is busy. I think there's like two weeks in December that aren't insane around Christmas. And then, um, like the end of July and then <laughs> it's different busies. It's different busies. We just finished winter guard season. So winter guard season was busy, but now we're in like testing and like AP testing season and navigating that with a neuro spicy kid and trying to help him with the overwhelm that can come with those things. And I feel him on that, but I'm also looking at him being like, buddy, um, I like it, it couldn't be me. Like I didn't, I didn't do AP classes. Like I know it's stressful, but I'll, I'll help you navigate the best I can. So anyway, we're just all the things we're in all the things. So it's more, um, it's more like uh, emotional parental support, but we're not driving all over the, the Southeast for, um, you know, competitions anymore. They ended their, um, they ended their season with their highest score of the season. And that's all we can ask for. Did I watch WGI world championships? Not all of it. I've seen clips of Avon's performance and some of the others. Beautiful, some really, really beautiful performances. So I have sadly seen clips. Baldwin, let's talk Baldwin. Are you ready to talk Baldwin? Is anybody ready to talk Baldwin? Is everybody already over Baldwin? How are we feeling? Are we ready for this trial to happen? I'm ready for this trial. Watch, Emily, don't speak it. Don't speak it. Don't speak it. Watch the Reed trial run straight up smack until the Baldwin trial starts. Like we're going to just be like, skirt, skirt. <laughs> like, we're just going to be pulling up from one trial to the other. It's going to be like, okay, come on guys. No time to go home. We're heading from Massachusetts straight to New Mexico. No time to pick up new clothes. Look, we're just going pack accordingly. We're never going home. <laughs> we're just, we're just in it. We're just in it. So let's talk Baldwin real quick and then we'll pull up the documents. New, new attorney joins prosecution team against Alec Baldwin in fatal rust shooting. Uh, this is from the AP. An attorney has been added, added to the special prosecution team that is pursuing an involuntary manslaughter charge against actor Alec Baldwin in the fatal shooting of cinematographer on the set of the Western movie Rust. Court officials confirmed on Thursday. Well, it's court documents. I'm glad to see that court officials also confirmed it. What was so striking to me in all of this is in the past, the prosecution has put out 7 million, that's an exaggeration, a lot of press statements before they do anything. They put out statements about like, we're going to do a thing. Hey, a thing is coming. Hey, we're going to do a thing. And then they finally do the thing. The fact that there was no press statement on this and it was just a filing and then the filing was confirmed is maybe them learning or maybe them a little, there's gotta be another word for that analogy. Um, maybe a little once bitten twice shy on Baldwin's attorney saying that these prosecutors are running around to the media all the time. Maybe they're just like, maybe we're not gonna do that this time. 
So we've got, let's see, that's not the one I want. That's the one I want. Uh, the district attorney for Santa Fe has appointed Erlinda Johnson as special prosecutor to this case, which is scheduled for trial in July. She was sworn in on Tuesday. Baldwin has pleaded not guilty. Pled? Pleaded? I have issues. I I think there's um, there's a grammar check on this because there's like the colloquial use and the non-colloquial use. Pled? Pleaded? I go with pled. I don't know what's actually right. I don't know how to get rid of these ads. Let me just do this this way. Oh, yes, we can. Dark mode. Yay. I'm much happier. Um, Miguelina, I'll grab it. No worries. So let's see. Um, Erlinda Johnson has been appointed a special prosecutor in the case, which is scheduled or a special prosecutor in the case scheduled for July. Baldwin pled not guilty to involuntary manslaughter. Uh, Let's see, Baldwin, the lead actor, we know all of this. Johnson's experience as a criminal defense and personal injury attorney include representing former New Mexico Secretary of State Diana Duran, who resigned in 2015 amid revelations. <clears throat> she used campaign funds to fuel a gambling addiction. Well, that sounds uh, scandalous. Duran received a 30-day jail sentence after pleading guilty to embezzlement and money laundering charges. 30 days for public official gambling and money laundering doesn't seem like enough to me. Like, shouldn't public officials, like, get a little bit more of a, uh, yo, that's real bad? Like, shouldn't there be a little bit more of a don't do that? Potato, potato. Emily, keep going. Johnson previously worked as a federal prosecutor on drug enforcement organized crime investigations after serving as an assistant DA in the Albuquerque area. Here's what this tells me. Here's what this tells me. They brought in someone who does not just have a background as a defense attorney, but has worked as a federal prosecutor and a state level prosecutor. I think it's needed. I think for all of Carrie Morrissey's delightful sass in the things that she writes, that it was clear that there was no prosecutorial background for her or if there was, it was a very, very long time ago. Her direct examination was not what you would expect from somebody who regularly did this. Defense questioning is normally cross-examination and her entire style was very based on cross-examination. I'm gonna tell you why I think they're doing this. This is an additional prosecutor. I think it is needed to tackle Baldwin's legal team. I think this was strategic to tackle Baldwin's legal team. This is an addition to Carrie. So I think we're going to still see Carrie. But I don't think we will see her doing everything. And I quite like Prosecutor Lewis. And we saw him doing some things. But I think this will divide up the work a bit more. So no, Carrie Morrissey is not out. This is an in addition to. And I think we'll get to why. So this is an in addition to. Carrie and Jason themselves are understanding, I think, where some of the weak spots might be. Some of the questioning, the way Carrie was questioning some witnesses is going to be objected to every single question by Baldwin's attorneys. Her leaving substantive topics to redirect is not going to fly. And this is rare unless you work in a jurisdiction. When you work in a jurisdiction, depending on the size, you get to know the other prosecutors and defense attorneys and the private defense attorneys. Y'all work together. Y'all work together all the time. So you've seen other people in trial, you've been in trial with them. In civil, the, you know, the ocean is much vaster than in criminal. And so you might not know attorneys that you're going up against. You might not know how they are in trial unless you can ask people in your community. It's rare that you have like tape of how this person acts in trial. Baldwin's team has gameplay footage of this prosecution it's going to be a lot of the same witnesses so they can make a playbook tailored to attacking carrie morrissey's style the witnesses weaknesses how the witnesses previously testified they can they can look at the transcripts but they can watch the entire thing on youtube and that is a unique a very very unique circumstance 
that Baldwin's defense team is going to take advantage of. If they don't take advantage of it, it would be the stupidest thing they could do. And this is not, this is a very good law firm with very intelligent lawyers. Somebody is watching gameplay footage and making a playbook. They're figuring out what the, what the end run is around these attorneys. So bringing in an attorney that Baldwin's defense team hasn't seen is going to be very helpful for the prosecution. And they have to be aware of that. So it's a huge advantage, Baldwin, that this trial's already played out. It's gonna be real interesting to see it play out because it's not a retrial, right? It's a take two, but it's not a take two. It's gonna be fantastic. So I think they should use everything to their advantage, but it is a, I can't think of another circumstance that's not a retrial where this exists. I can't think of another case that is not a retrial where there's a part one, part two like this, maybe Daybell, but it's different prosecutors than Lori Vallow. So it's just very different. Yes. And they had representatives at Hannah's trial. Yes. And they get to see what the internet was saying. Like his PR team also gets to, gets to see public sentiment. They're at an incredible advantage. Oh, and the crumblies. Good point. And the crumblies. That's an excellent point. Um, so it's a unique circ it's a unique circumstance. Uh, but oh, it's the same prosecutors for Daybell. I, I trust the only thing I know about Daybell is the rule of in herring that was yesterday. Um, it is not a case I am following given everything. No, and the Adelson case. The chat has proven me wrong. Chad, I love this. And the Adelson case. Again, not a retrial televised and a part one, part two, part three. So there are at least three examples. I'm going to rephrase. I withdraw everything I just said. It's a newer circumstance where attorneys can watch game tape of the witnesses and the attorneys on not a retrial. It's going to be really interesting. Prosecutors said Gutierrez Reed unwittingly brought live ammunition onto the set. Uh, defense attorneys for Baldwin are going to urge the judge to dismiss the indictment. Oh, are urging. That's correct. Um, and accuse prosecutors of unfairly stacking the deck in the grand jury proceedings. Have you met a grand jury proceeding? It's a probable cause standard. Special prosecutors deny those accusations and accuse Baldwin of shameless attempts to escape culpability, highlighting contradictions in his statements to law enforcement, to workplace safety regulators, and in a television interview. They've got a lot of statements from Baldwin, too. And they're going to use his words against him this entire trial to try to kind of force him to testify, I think. They're going to um, continue kind of baiting the trap to see if he will testify. His lawyers will see it coming. I don't know if Baldwin will. I, I think Baldwin will get... He seems to get emotionally involved in a thing. Um, and sometimes when those emotions are high, it's really hard to make good decisions. I don't think testifying is a good decision for Baldwin. You guys can let me know your thoughts on that. Let's just go to the um, court documents and then we'll go to one other article on this real quick. But we pull up court documents here. We love it. So, you know, go to the, go to, when in doubt, go to the file. This is from April 16th, filed at like 2.40 p.m. local time, New Mexico, appointment of special prosecutor. I, the DA, or the elected DA, um, for the first judicial district pursuant to the code, hereby appoint Erlinda Johnson as special prosecutor for good cause in the above styled cause effective the 12th of April, 2024. This appointment grants the authority to act in the above styled manner only. Meaning, acting as a special prosecutor only for the Baldwin prosecution not hired by the DA's office, not going to be a prosecution going forward, hired as a special prosecutor just for this case, and that is it. And then they took an oath, and that is it. So we've got that. Um, I saw somebody ask, is it, uh, Catherine, is it ever a good idea to testify in your own trial? There are some jurisdictions where you almost have to testify if you're asserting self-defense, depending on the way the self-defense uh, laws are written. So if there is an affirmative defense like self-defense, sometimes you don't have as much of a choice. So with that, um, we have a new special prosecutor in New Mexico. 
we will see when we still have to get to Baldwin's reply and then a hearing on the motion to dismiss. I think this some of the motion to dismiss is strategy to uh, run out the clock on the prosecutors. And if I'm the defense team, would I do the same thing? Yep. The defense team has quite a lot of resources. They have a very large firm. The special prosecutors are just think about this with me. The special prosecutors are Carrie Morrissey um, and Lewis. And with those two special prosecutors, they don't really have like an entire office behind them. Yes, they have the resources of the DA's office, but I imagine they don't have a tremendously large team behind them. They've been in trial on the Gutierrez matter. They've been dealing with the sentencing and listening to the 200 you know, plus plus jail calls in that case. So they have been incredibly busy finishing the Gutierrez prosecution. And then they're still dealing with all of these motions on the Baldwin motion to dismiss. So they are stretched, I would imagine, pretty thin on time and focus, which means they're not prepping for trial as much, potentially, in the Baldwin matter. So Baldwin's attorneys can keep the litigation rolling. It's not improper to ask for a motion to dismiss, but you file 300 pages it starts pushing up what the prosecution has to respond to. You throw 15 arguments into that motion to dismiss, the prosecution has to deal with it. So I think they are burying them a bit in paper. That's right, People's Article is out today. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna pull that up. This is what I was talking about with, um, with the reporter, Eric. Uh, who I really like quite a lot. Is that an improper strategy? No, not at all. They have time to do it. Why not? Michael asked, why are special prosecutors needed in Baldwin's trial? Same reason as Hannah Gutierrez reads. The prosecutor's office asked to appoint special prosecutors because of the time and the volume of work here. You can't give these cases to somebody who also has a regular caseload. It seems that this is not a large prosecutor's office. The DA's office in LA is one of the biggest prosecutor's agencies in the world. So the DA's office can put a lawyer on one or two cases when they are large high profile cases and the rest of the office keeps spinning. But in a small office, if you don't have a unit that deals with special trials, uh, major crimes and things like that, you might not have those prosecutors that have the bandwidth to take it on because they have so many other cases. Depending on where you are, the caseload is, it, it can be substantial and you just don't have the time to facilitate a caseload and do this. And they might not have enough prosecutors to have a prosecutor just dedicated to this. So the special prosecutors come in, they are given the power of the prosecuting office without being hired to that office for a limited purpose. So um, Jesse said, so special prosecutor is essentially dedicated prosecutor. It goes a little beyond that because they are not hired by the DA's office. They are like deputized for one purpose. So they're like, they are, are truly brought in. They are private attorneys that work in their own jobs. And then they are brought in and deputized just for this prosecution. So it's not like they're sitting at the DA's office at their desk and somebody's walking by and be like, hey, we got this DUI that came in this morning. Can you go to court and handle this? They are just assigned to this, which means they are working with, um, probably working from their own offices, not from inside the DA's office. So they are assigned just to that case. Whether they need to facilitate their own caseload in their private practices or not is up to them. So... It's quite a lot. Um, and so I understand bringing in a special prosecutor. I've never seen LA bring in special prosecutors for anything just because they have so many. And LA has such voluminous amount of trials. They have so many prosecutors with such uh, vast and deep experience that they don't really, I don't think they could find anyone that's better, honestly. <laughs> I don't, um, 
I don't know if they could find like a special trial attorney to bring in that would be as good as the attorneys that are already there. Not to say other prosecutors aren't good, but at a lot of prosecutors' offices, there is a churn where as you as you gain experience, there is kind of a cap where people churn out and go into private practice or defense work just because at some point you would like to be able to retire. And depending on the pay scale, it might make more sense to have a little bit of control of your own life. The DA's office in LA has a lot more prosecutors that are career prosecutors that stay. So you just have this depth of experience um, within the office. So these attorneys are experienced attorneys, the special prosecutors, um, and that's very helpful. There were also conflict issues which also helps with the special prosecutor. All right. So with all of that, um, is there anything else, Baldwin, we need to talk about? I don't know. I don't think they get Alec, I don't think they get Alec Murdoch's badge. I don't think they have blue and red lights on their cars. <laughs> I don't think they need it. Um, I don't know if Carrie Morrissey does the new, the newly appointed special prosecutor has both federal and state prosecution experience, which will be helpful. So um, Jam and Honey says, so you've never worked with special prosecutors before. I mean, I've worked with a ton of tremendously special prosecutors, but no, they were all my colleagues. <laughs> Can you be a special prosecutor? You can't pay me enough. There, you can't pay me it. You can't pay me enough. Smurfana said, how do they get paid? Way back when, at the beginning of all of this, I covered the um, plea for money that the DA's office in Santa Fe made to the legislature asking for money for this. So the taxpayers pay it, but they asked for more money. Was it $600,000? I think it was $600,000. It might've been more, but they asked for more money. Um, Perry said, ADB, do you think some of Morrissey's gaffes in HGR were to help set up Baldwin's trial? No, I don't. I think they needed, I honestly think they needed another attorney who has prosecute, prosecution experience, but this attorney also has PI and wrongful death experience, which means they are gonna be familiar with all the types of medical records that are gonna be at play here. So I think they needed more help, honestly. Um, Valerie said, I wish I could see Emily prosecuting a case. The way I'm so glad that that doesn't exist anywhere. I mean, there were great days in court. There were not great days in court, um, but also like, I don't wanna be filmed when I can't control my angles. Ugh. <laughs> sounds awful i have a lot of empathy for the lawyers involved even when i give them a hard time i have a lot of empathy for the lawyers involved it's not an easy job to do and it's not an easy job to do for the world to look at imagine the entire world looking at you in your day-to-day -day work it is not an easy job to do with the entire world watching i mean that doesn't mean we're not gonna like point out what the lawyers are doing um but I, I always feel worse for the public servant attorneys than I do for like, yeah, but you're getting paid like over a million dollars in legal fees. Like, it's fine. So no, you can't pay me enough. I'd rather do this. TV, I would consider it. <laughs> so are we ready? Let's move on. And then we will, um, we'll move on. We'll go to Idaho. We'll go, oh no, I was gonna do another article and we'll go to questions. Let's pull up the people article so you guys can go show it some love. Um, because that's really that's really helpful. Um, let me pull it up real quick. I have a link. My team sent it to me this morning. Um, I really like I really like how factual people is. And I know there's I know there are people who is like, oh, people, it's like celebrity news. We all care about celebrity news. We love celebrity news. It's delightful. Like, let's go. So let's pull this up. Um, I'll put the link in the description with, oh, Mingalina, let me give that to you. And we'll put the link in the description. If you guys want to show, go show it some clicks. Alec Baldwin wants his rust manslaughter. I haven't read this yet, by the way. So we're going to do a first look together. Alec Baldwin wants his rust manslaughter case dismissed. A legal expert notes his strongest argument exclusive. Still, Emily D. Baker, a lawyer and former LA deputy district attorney who is not involved in the case, says it's unlikely Baldwin will be successful at having the case dismissed. Mm -hmm. So this is Eric Anderson. Really enjoy him. I'm going to, we've got photos of Baldwin. I'm going to show you those and then we're going to go to reader mode because reader mode makes me happy. 
All right. Um, as Alec Baldwin's July trial, oh, where do I, where do I link to? We're going to hit that later. As Alec Baldwin's July trial for involuntary manslaughter approaches, the actor's legal team is seeking to have his case dismissed. That is unlikely to happen, explains legal expert Emily D. Baker. Hi, I'm Emily D. Baker, a lawyer and former LA Deputy District Attorney. I'm going to have to start extending every time. I'm going to be like, Eric, you're going to, each time you're going to have to add one thing. Like each time you're going to have to add a thing. YouTube, <laughs> podcaster, like e I'm teasing. Quote, it's very rare for grand jury indictments to be dismissed. The prosecution has a has very, very wide latitude at how they conduct a grand jury. But Baldwin 66, who was indicted in January for his role in the accidental shooting death of Russ cinematographer Helena Hutchins on the New Mexico set of the Western movie in 2021, could find some hope in one of the arguments his legal team made in their March 14th motion, says Baker. The strongest argument is the argument that the state did not present the instructions to the grand jury accurately. I said this, I say this all the time. You guys know how I feel about jury instructions. You fuck up jury instructions. And it is, it is one of those like, ooh, if that's, if that's true, then there is a, there is a, um, there is a way that that can get overturned. Oh, honk banana. No, this is a great idea. That quotation should read legal expert, Emily D. Baker, a former DA and not a real YouTuber. It should. I love it. I want to do that. <laughs> um, these are the types of potential errors that can get things overturned. So if there was an error in the way the grand jury got the grand jury instructions, that can be an issue that warrants an indictment getting thrown out. Baker's referring to Baldwin's lawyers claims in their motion to dismiss that special prosecutor Carrie Morrissey gave quote prejudicial instructions to the grand jury. And then he quoted the motion uh, directly, which is helpful. Morrissey included the italicized language, even though she had successfully argued to the court that Baldwin's requested instruction concerning subjective knowledge was important or improper because quote, it assumes that the factual basis of negligent act was failing to check the firearm for live rounds. And that any deviation from the UG, you know, from jury instructions, by inserting such language was unwarranted. The prosecution, Baker notes, very much disagrees with the way lawyers for Baldwin, who has maintained he did not pull the trigger and he did not know that the gun accidentally contained a live, uh, the gun accidentally contained live ammunition has characterized the scenario. In their April 5th response, Morrissey, oh, I love that Eric quoted this because I pointed him to the things in the motions that made sense to my brain. So I love how he pulled those out into the article. On April 5th, Morrissey and fellow special prosecutor Jason Lewis called the claims from Baldwin lawyers, Baldwin's lawyers, quote, patently false. They said they did not deviate from the uniform jury instructions. We simply filled in the language that was required to be filled in and did so in accordance with the instruction and the facts presented to the jury. As for what happens next with the motion to dismiss, Baldwin's team has an opportunity to file a reply to the prosecutor's response. After that, the judge in the case uh, could make the decision based on the filings or schedule a hearing to allow the attorneys and both sides to argue their points. And I think that it's appropriate in the motion to dismiss to allow the attorneys to be heard, said Baker. And I think she will. She likes she likes to hear them. Um, she likes to, I don't know if she likes to hear them. She sits there like this. She likes to let them have their say. <laughs> so um, let's see. With regard to the outcome of the motion based on the jury instruction argument, it comes down to a very narrow question of whether that jury instruction was proper or whether that jury instruction violated what the court ordered about the grand jury, continues Baker, who said the judge will make that decision. But even if Baldwin's attorneys are unsuccessful in their motion to have the case against Baldwin dismissed, Baker says the whole process is somewhat of a win for the former 30 Rock star. Baldwin, she notes, has a large legal team compared to the special prosecutors who on April 12th added a third to their team. In civil litigation, they commonly joke about burying somebody in paper, says Baker, who notes Morrissey and Lewis also just successfully prosecuted Russ Armour Hannah Gutierrez for involuntary manslaughter in March. Gutierrez Reed, who is in charge of the weapons on set, was sentenced to 18 months. They're dealing with all the casework in Hannah's case and the sentencing, doing all the motion work and doing that trial. And then they're also re responding to these motions in the Baldwin case and the trial's just a few months away. So they're probably spread very thin. The prosecution can get buried in paper here, and then their time is substan or substantively taken up, substantially taken up with dealing with it. Yep. But um, if you're the defense team, if you're the defense team, isn't that the play? Isn't the play to just spin the prosecutors in circles so they can't focus on the trial? 
like just keep spinning the merry-go-round. We're not just going to file this motion. We're going to file this motion and we are going to allege everything you've done wrong. Like we're not just going to throw the motion out there. They personally attacked the prosecutors and the prosecutor's office. So we're going to throw in all, all of the shade. So you not only have to respond to the legal arguments, but you have to respond to everything we said. Everything we said. Um, Jam and Honey said, wow, very well spoken. Do you agree with this special legal expert's points? Yes, I think they are a tremendous expert um, in the law. And they love the pop culture things, which is so needed in today's society to, you know, talk about the facts aside from all the fuckery. So, um, let's see. Cheryl said, Emily, will you cover the Scott Peterson case and possible retrial? I covered, I covered it um, a while back on the podcast. You'll find it in the videos on this channel. And as more things happen, I will circle back to it. So anyway, I think the defense, um, I think the defense is going to continue to heavily litigate this case for their client because I think that's to the best advantage of their client, don't you? Even if you don't like their client, that's to the best advantage of their client and they're going to do what's to the best advantage of their client. And like, no shade to them. I mean, at all. That's the game. I am not, I am not in a, you know, I'm gonna rephrase that. I'm very much with law in a don't hate the player, hate the game kind of a situation. And if you think that the way the game is happening, like the sentencing in the Ruby Frankie case is BS. We can change the rules of the game, which is a really incredible thing. Like the people of Utah can be like, time out, time out. We need to rewrite the rules. Let's do that. Let's rewrite the rules as to this part. We get to change the rules of the game. Look, this is controversial. I'm gonna say it, I've been on the internet long enough. I'm like, whatever, come for me. I don't give any fucks that Uno says you can't stack plus twos on plus twos or plus fours on plus fours. We rewrote the rules at this house and we stack. Shocking, stacks. Uno says that's not part of the game. Guess what? I can write the rules at our house. It is part of the game, Uno. Get out of here. I can stack a plus two on a plus two and it skips. And then somebody's drawn plus four, bitches. I don't care if you say it's the official rules. We get to make the rules. We get to make the rules. <laughs> House rules every single time. I know Uno's wrong. Uno is wrong. You're right. We do stacks over here. The House rules win. And the thing is with, with um, our law, in, in theory, sometimes in practice, we are in charge of the laws in this country. It is literally for us. And we can tell those that make the laws, look, this is fucked. We need to change it. And a lot of times things change. Sometimes it waits till it costs everybody quite a lot of money and then they go, oh, yeah, that is a bad rule. It sometimes is very slow. But if we don't talk about the game that's being played, we can't find the rules that aren't working. And that is always my goal here. Let's talk about the game that's being played. Let's talk about the rules. Let's talk about the laws, the rules of evidence, the jurisdictions. Let's talk about all of it so that we can understand the outcome of the game. You can't understand the outcome of the game if you don't know the rules. Look, cricket seems fascinating to me. I have no idea what the fuck is happening. So I can't understand the outcome well, cause I don't understand the rules at all. So if I can help explain the rules here, then hopefully we can all understand the outcome. All right, with all of that, <laughs> Nikki said, Emily, there's finite rules. I like rules. Also, Emily, change the rules. Look, if everybody wants to change the rules, that's fine. Because the thing with changing the law rules is then everybody has to be told. And then you go, oh, 
okay, new rule. And everyone's on notice. There's no secret rules. Everyone's on notice as to the rules. Everyone knows the rules. We're all dealing with the same rules. And then the game comes in in the finite interpretation of the rules. But I can help explain this game because it's a game that I understand and have played myself, which is why whoever coined the phrase courtcaster, it's probably Lyndon, whoever coined the phrase courtcaster, that is very much how I see myself because I used to play the game on the field and now I sit in the stands and give color commentary. My stands are a very comfortable blue chair. So, you know, following in the, the footsteps and wheels of my beloved friend, Amy Van Dyken, who is an amazing athletic commentator and does commentary on swimming, which was her sport, but, and other things. So I just am bringing in the fine broadcasting tradition of color commentary. Oh, Katie, it's not a new chair. I just think you guys can see it better when I move this. I've had this chair for a while. So, okay. It, it's better than sitting in the bleachers. <laughs> Honestly, I don't have to deal with the weather. I do have to deal with the fact that my air conditioning doesn't seem to be on. Um, so let's do that real quick. Let Emily make, make it not hot in your office. Oh, uh, let's see. Where is my thermostat? Oh, ugh. you can't set this to 78 and expect me to survive while I'm streaming. God in heaven. Um, this is why I got a new thermostat so I could adjust it while I'm streaming. <laughs> like a hundred percent. Let's talk Koberger, shall we? We're Baldwin. Take him. Baldwin, we're done with you. We're going to talk about Koberger. Wait, we can do a quick palate cleanser. We'll do a quick palate cleanser. For all of you still wondering, we need to get back to another food court, but Crumble dismissed their case against Dirty Dough. So Crumble was like, okay, fine. We understand that a box is not something we can sue somebody over. So Crumble dismissed, we have no further details of how they settled it, but Crumble dismissed their case against Dirty Dough. So the Utah cookie wars are ostensibly over. Crumble realized that you can't like trademark a box that's a rectangle like come on oh yeah it took it took quite a while they're fighting over lawyers fees now though like it's almost done but they're fighting over attorney's fees oh speaking of attorney fees do you want to know how much it cost to yeet the texting judge these are these are the little nuggets buried in the middle of the live stream attorney's fees were awarded for the attorney that had to yeet the texting judge. And in that motion, and if you want to go over it at the end, we'll go over it. But in that motion talked about the amount of work it took because yeeting a sitting judge is rare and tremendously difficult. Over a hundred thousand dollars in legal fees to yeet the texting judge. It's wild. And that attorney was not billing at a crazy rate. That attorney was billing at like $500 an hour a hundred over a hundred thousand dollars to the people of the state of Oklahoma who voted for this judge who then act like a spoiled 12 year old and then they had to yeet the judge over a hundred thousand dollars to yeet let's talk Koberger then we'll if we want to pull up that motion on uh texting judge we can so I'll put up a poll when we get I'll put up a poll when we get to um Koberger. Um, 500 an hour is below the na the rate for an attorney with that level of experience. It is a, it is a restrained rate. Remember in some of the Britney Spears filings, we saw rates upwards of 1800 an hour. Like there are lawyers with experience that can make, um, that money. I see a lot of questions about this. Let's get through Koberger and then we'll just pull it up and I'll show you the billables and we'll go through it. So it was quite a lot of work. All right. Let us do this. We're going to do the alibi first, and then we'll go to the newer documents. Alibi. Um, where did it go? I just had this document pulled up and my brain can't see it. It's here somewhere. And my brain is like, no, I'm not. Let's do a quick road so far. My probate attorney charges 300 an hour. SJ Sheila, 
you found yourself a probate attorney who uh who is good to you i don't i also don't mind i think law is going to go to to more of like a uh like a package rate but billables are expen- expensive law is going to have a come up and because there's like some litigation that can sustain it like if you're counsel for mercedes benz it's going to be different but a lot of people uh, law is going to have to shift for people to be able to afford legal representation and as as ai makes things faster lawyers should be able to do things faster with um with assistive help to bring those rates down and it's going to matter very much let's go to idaho um you guys grab grab your favorite drink and snackies grab a grab a pillow for your lower back and let's roll quick road so far as we get into idaho with brian koberger remember months and months and months ago time is a construct so how many months i don't remember koberger filed his notice of alibi a notice of alibi was requested by the state idaho has a very specific code and timing to file notice of alibi the law and the code stick to the code in idaho requires that if the defendant is going to use an alibi defense they have to notice the prosecution of the times places witnesses who are going to support that alibi defense it is intended for a you know so and so was over at my house and we were watching a movie or i at that time was at a restaurant and this is the restaurant i was at this is the location this is the these are the people that i was with it is intended for a who are the witnesses other than the defendant who are going to support your alibi defense that you were doing something else somewhere else at the time who are the witnesses and what is the evidence because the state needs notice to investigate those witnesses so there is timing in all of this with an alibi defense at that time the defense said mr koberger likes to go driving late at night and all of us went and that's not an alibi defense that's just you saying stuff like that's that's not an alibi that's not an alibi defense that's not an alibi that's just you saying stuff that the media might pick up that is which again is a game the defense is allowed to play because of the non-dissemination order in this case if the prosecution's like you need to file an alibi defense they're not going to say well he doesn't have an alibi they're going to say well he was driving late at night so that the media then can pick it up and be like oh he was driving late at night okay um but that's not an alibi that's going to be supported in court what's he going to do brian koberger's going to testify and be like i was driving no they're going to cross-examine whoever the expert is to talk about where the vehicle was going to say well could he have been driving elsewhere you know so that was the previous alibi and the state filed and said that's not an alibi and then they waived speedy trial and the case got put out and there's no um trial date yet but the the court set another date for the defense to file their alibi i'm going to keep giving it quotations because even what they have refiled is not an alibi it is things but it's not an alibi it it's not an alibi it's not an alibi so let's go to the defendant's notice of defendant's supplemental response to state's alibi demand comes now brian koberger buying through his attorney of record and taylor public defender and hereby files a supplemental response to the demand for alibi and in compliance with idaho code and idaho criminal rule 12.1 mr koberger moved to pullman washington in june of 2022 do we need a full history sure as an avid runner and hiker he explored many areas there of the palouse i'm sure i'm saying that wrong apologies of note he explored um i'm going to hold on to some of these questions about the cell phone data of note he explored uh 
Emily, you're not going to get this right. I said Palouse correctly. One in one in a hundred on this on this channel. So we're gonna just one in a hundred. One in a hundred. One in a hundred. <laughs> one in a hundred. Um Huawei. 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 Park. Huawei. I don't know. I'm not gonna be good at that. I can't pronounce things. And I don't want to say it like Wawa, like the store. Wawa, we, Wawa, why? Is that are we are we close? Hopefully, we're gonna go with that. He liked to explore the park uh, in July of 2022. It became his favorite location. It's a beautiful area up there. Wawa, way, cool. After the school year began, Koberger was busy with classes and work at WSU, and his running and hiking decreased, but did not stop. Instead, his nighttime drives increased. This is supported by data from Mr. Koberger's phone, showing him in the countryside late at night and or in the early morning on several occasions. On this day, on this day, on this day. The phone data includes numerous photographs taken on several different late evenings and early mornings, including in November, depicting the night sky. But what about on this day? Koberger was out driving in the early morning hours of November 13th, 2022, as he often did to hike and run or see the moon and stars. Is that? He drove through the area south of Pullman, Washington, west of Moscow, Idaho, including the park. Does his car data and phone data support that? Uh, busy the gamer mom said only has one hiking trail and the gated park is closed from dusk till 7 a.m. Look, man, there was a period of time in my life when if somebody was like, where were you on this night? I would be like, so a friend of mine and I were at this golf course because it was populating Snorlax and I understand that it's weird to be at a golf course at this hour of the night, but it's the only time we have to play Pokemon Go. And my Pokemon Go game data would support exactly what I was doing and where. <laughs> so I know that sounds odd, but we were we were just playing Pokemon Go. Why were you out at the Santa Monica Pier till 2 a.m.? Look, there was a Lapras spawning. I ran in the sand. Um. We, my phone will support where I was. <laughs> I was also there with other people. Look, y'all, there weren't Snorlax, there was not a Snorlax nest, but there was kind of a regular spawn at the time. And there was, um, there was an app at the time that would show you where stuff was spawning before that whatever glitch got fixed. <laughs> so we could see on the app where stuff was spawning and being like, wait a second. And that's where you were able to. Anyway, um, I don't know if Mr. Koberger had a spiritual witness to his seeing the moon and the stars. I also love to go out and see the moon and the stars. The thing that's going to be difficult is if his cell phone does not support this. If his cell phone supports this, fine. If his cell phone does not support this, we have a problem. I actually took an astrology class in, um, in college and we would get to go out at night with like the telescopes and do, well, astronomy, I guess, not astrology. The, the, Emily, the other one, both are great, but the other one, and we would go out and, uh, with the, with the telescopes and stuff at night. It was so fun. Yes, astronomy. I apparently I used them synonymously. Movements of the stars. And it was so much fun. I had the I had the most fun. It counted for a science credit. I got to go out and literally stare at the stars at night. Absolutely loved it and get to, you know, this night sky in Massachusetts different than the night sky in Southern California outside of Los Angeles and we would go like out out. It was so much fun. Loved it. Loved it, loved it. So 
Let's see what the corroboration is on this alibi that's not an alibi that's maybe an alibi that's not an alibi. Mr. Koberger intends to offer testimony of Cy Ray, a cell phone expert, cell tower, cell phone, and other radio frequency CV attached, to show Koberger's mobile phone was south of Pullman, Washington and west of Moscow on November 13th. That Koberger's mobile device did not travel east on the Moscow Pullman Highway in the early morning hours of November 13th, and thus could not be the vehicle captured on video along the Moscow Pullman Highway near Floyd's cannabis shop. Additional information as to Koberger's whereabouts as the early morning hours include additional analysis by Mr. Ray will be provided once the state provides discovery requested and is now subject to the upcoming motion to dispel or compel if not disclosed. Mr. Ray's testimony will also reveal that critical exculpatory evidence further corroborating Koberger's alibi was either not preserved or has been withheld. So there's something else going on. A lot of these motion to compel are sealed. But they're saying his phone did not travel. The state was saying that his phone was off. Clearly, there is going to be contention over the cell phone data. I wonder if the expert from the defense will say that the phone the phone wasn't off, but the phone didn't have signal. But if the phone didn't have signal, the phone would still show that because you can still be taking photos and stuff with no signal. So we'll see what happens with this. But again, it's not, it, it is more what was anticipated. There is a witness. Here is the witness that will say he's not there because the cell phone shows he's not there. Well, it's not exactly what's anticipated by an alibi, but it is better than what they said at the beginning. Like we're getting closer than what was said at the beginning. But we will see. Um, however, can you leave a cell phone there? Yeah. Can cell phones be left behind? Yeah. The cell phone evidence will matter. The, the car evidence will matter. So is it an alibi? It, not, I mean, not really. It's, but I understand why they filed it as an alibi because they're saying he wasn't there, but this is more the defense's case. Is that maybe me being uh, picky about it? Maybe, but it is a witness that will corroborate the defense's theory that he was not there. The thing is the defense is not gonna be able to stay. He was hiking and stargazing unless he testifies. The state is only, only going to, or the defense is only going to be able to say, but he can't have been there. Like he can't have been at the house. So that's more of disproving the state's case than it is a true alibi. But again, I understand that the defense is putting this out there. What's not gonna come into trial if he doesn't testify is that he is a, avid runner, avid hiker, unless they get it in through cell phone data, because he did have some of those tracking apps on his phone. I don't know if he also had a watch that tracked it, but he had some of those tracking apps. If those, if those tracking apps were showing that he was um, in that area during the relevant time period, that would be helpful. But if the phone is silent during the murders, it's going to be uh, open for interpretation by the jury. Murdoch's phone, Murdoch being very active on his phone, an avid phone user. And then his phone being completely silent during the period of time that the state said the murders happened, that silence is telling. So it'll be interesting to see what the defense expert says whenever we get to that in 2025 and beyond. But they're not going to be able, what evidence are they going to have of him running and hiking? None, unless he testifies. What evidence are they going to have about his nighttime drives increasing? None, unless he testifies. Um, are they going to have phone data showing him leading up to the time of the murders and be able to cross-examine that? Probably, especially if the state is going to say that he was in that area because they're going. the defense is going to want to give another interpretation of that. If the state's like, look, he was in this area frequently, they're going to want to say, okay, but is this park in that area? Is this in that area? Do people hike there? They're going to do this through cross-examination and let the questions 
insinuate the answer. Well, does this cell phone tower ping at a park and near the house? Is it just the one cell phone? That's all really going to be cross-examination where you're going to get, you're going to, the defense will allow the jury to make these conclusions, but they can't say, oh, well, you know, school was busy, so he didn't get to go running, so he started driving at night. They're not really going to have the ability to do that unless he testifies or somebody who goes driving with him testifies. And then they're going to go through the phone data includes numerous photographs taken on several late evenings and early mornings, including in November, when in November. And we'll see. And we'll see if the uh, the Woods Witch made a very great point in the chat saying, I looked up Moscow weather history by the day. Yeah, if it was a if it was a cloudy night, if it was a rainy night, if it was an overcast night, that's different. Um, Raider CP says serious stargazers are often use an app on their phone. He apparently wasn't into the stars enough to have his cell phone on to use the app. But if he did that on other nights, but not that one, then we'll see. How wide is the cell phone cone there? CS tiers, I don't know, but we need to know. How far is this area from the house? Don't know, but we need to know. Um, you guys know where the house is with everything. So you guys can, uh, check it out on maps. Cause now we know which park it is that he's saying he was at or near. So we'll see. Um, I have the Stargazer app on my phone and way too many bird apps. <laughs> can't, can't stop. No, I'm not apologizing. Can't stop, won't stop. I've reached that age. I went to the eye doctor, who, which called me old in a, in a variety of different ways. And um, I was like, I'm just at that age where my arms are too short and the font isn't big enough and I just need to shift some of my, some of my glasses. And it's like, yeah, it's, we're kind of at that phase in life. Yeah, we are. We're definitely at that phase in life where things are just changing. And I'm like, mm. A, the bird watching. I need to be able to see the birds further away and more crisp. Like, I know I need I need to change my prescription. <laughs> It'll help for driving, too. Um, you know what's interesting, though? Chat, you've pointed it out. The TikTok psychic said nothing about Brian Koberger stargazing or hiking or running or driving by himself late at night. Um. So let's see. Um, Mariposa FRR, thank you for that. Um, Explore car. Yes, we can see your comments. We there has been some known glitching. <laughs> I can see you through the screen too. Just two. Stop saying I've reached that age. I'll be 30 in July and I have all the bird apps. I, I will stop saying I've reached that age, though I, I do find it funny. Uh her spiritual witness has a bedtime EDB. <laughs> The spiritual witness could not derive that he was stargazing and looking at the moon. Um, maybe he was communing with the, sp the spiritual witness. Look, I understand also the issue. Some of you are saying maybe the TikTok psychic isn't really psychic. <gasps> what? Some of, um, some of you have also said, look, I... I spend a lot of time alone. I get it. Um, but there are things in our homes that indicate when we are home. If we are on our home Wi-Fi, it indicates that there are homes. There are a lot of ways to prove that you are home when you are home, even if you are home alone. If he were home alone watching TV, his Wi-Fi network would show that like a connected watch or a phone is connected. Like your phone can tell on you in multiple ways. Sometimes those ways are helpful, um, but your digital devices can tell. So for some of you who are like, hey, but you know, I'm, I'm home alone. What, what about me? Your home will also tell on you. Our homes are so connected, they will tell on us. So he interestingly doesn't argue that he's home. Is this, um, we'll see. The state has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that it's him. They're like, we've got video of this car. Okay, but there's other cars. So we'll see. Um, we'll see what the black box from his car says. Well, you know, and yes, for those of you that are like, I'm home gaming, it will absolutely will establish, <laughs> establish it. I'm home gaming. Um, <laughs> your YouTube chats, yes. Your YouTube chats will show that you were you were on stream with your device. 
So there are lots of ways that these things can be established. Do not worry. Um, this, this is, this is more than they offered before. So let's do a quick summary of the alibi and then we'll get to the other documents. All right. The defense has filed a substantially similar alibi to what they have previously filed. Previously, they said Koberger likes to go for drives alone at night. They have added to that alibi saying that not only does he like to drive at night, he likes to go stargaze and look at the stars and the moon, that there are photos on his phone of the night sky in the late evenings and early mornings around this area in Idaho and Washington, including in November. It does not say on the night of the murders in November that there are photos. It does say that he was out driving in the early morning hours of November 13th, as he often did. And he did drive through the area of South Pullman, Washington, west of Moscow, including um, the park that he was at, Wawaway Park. They said that the partial corroboration of that will be a cell phone expert who will say that Brian's phone did not travel east on Moscow Pullman uh, Highway in the early morning hours of November 13th and could not be the vehicle captured on video by Floyd's cannabis shop on the Moscow Pullman Highway. So they are saying the car caught on video can't be Koberger's car because his phone did not travel. We will see how the experts handle that. There will be lots of cell phone expert testimony in this case. It will be interesting to see how it plays out when this case eventually goes to trial, but they are saying that he was out driving at night, but not in the area of the murder and that cell phone data will support that. We will see. There are other new filings in this case. Let's get to those. Um, let's see. Stipulation to unseal state's motion for order prohibiting contact. That was just filed. Let's go to that. First, there are other motions to compel discovery that are going on. Everything in the motions to compel discovery are redacted. So those are kind of hard to go through. This is a first look. Stipulation to unseal state's motion for order prohibiting contact with prospective jurors, absence leave, leave of court with redactions comes now by and through the Latah County prosecuting attorney and defendant. Um, and hereby stipulate to the courts granting the state's motion to unseal the motion for order prohibiting contact with prospective jurors. This was filed under seal before the hearings. And then the shit got out of the horse, the cat ran out of the bag and the rest of it during that hearing. So now there's like no point. It was filed on March 29th with attachments, which are remaining sealed as requested in the state's motion with the additional redaction of the second sentence in the first full paragraph. At the request of defense counsel, a redacted copy along with the motion is included. So let's go to the redacted copy. Um, let's see. That's the stipulated motion. That's the notice of defendant supplemental alibi. This is the motion for order prohibiting contact. This is the order unsealing the state's motion. Order unsealing state's motion for order prohibiting contact with prospective jurors. It's hereby ordered that the state's motion to unseal um, is granted with the additional redaction submitted in the stipulation. Let's go to the motion that is redacted. I like that they list it as redacted so that you know that these are the public motions. This docketing system that they're using is a public system, so it will hit the court system first, and then it will get uploaded into the public docketing system, which kind of makes sure that the things that are redacted need to be redacted and get redacted. So let's go through this motion. Remember, this is the, the motion that kind of underlies, let's do a summary. Hold on, let's just do a summary. Before the hearing on the defense's survey contacting potential jurors in this case as the evidence and foundation for their motion to change venue, the prosecution filed a motion under seal asking the court to stop it and to stop the defense from continuing their survey until they could be heard in court. 
the prosecution filed their motion for order prohibiting contact with prospective jurors under seal. The defense filed a response and the defense filed a motion for the court to retract their order because the court had ordered the survey to stop until there was a hearing. And the motion to retract the order is the motion where the defense said all the quiet parts that were sealed. And so then the prosecution was like, wait a second, if I'm filing it under seal and then you're not filing it under seal, then my stuff shouldn't be under seal. So after the hearing happened and the prosecution read in the questions that were being asked on the survey and the expert came and testified and Santa said like, not today, judge. And oof, you're so angry. I mean, that was a summary of what he said to the, uh, to the expert. After all of it was known to the public, the court has now granted a stipulation between the defense and the prosecution to unseal the original motion from the state so we can see what the state was arguing and what the state said. There are redactions that were approved by the defense and there was an attachment that stayed sealed per the stipulation. Remember, the court asked the parties to come to an agreement on this. The court still has not ruled on what's gonna happen with the surveys. So even though the motion for change of venue was supposed to happen in just a few weeks, that can't happen. The surveys aren't done. The court hasn't ruled yet. So now we get to go um, take a look at what the original motion was that was filed under seal. And now everybody's like, forget it. If we've already said the things, let's say it. Oh, that was itches. Streaming. Mm. All right. Comes now the state of Idaho by and through the prosecutor and moves the court pursuant to the court's revised amended non-dissemination order for an order prohibiting the defense from contacting prospective jurors about the case without first obtaining permission from the court. It's a very long motion. Ms. Smith said, I'm late, that's okay. Has EDB gone over the CV of the expert? Is he credible? The expert was great. I've heard back and forth and was hoping to get an objective perspective. He has a very thorough CV. I went over it when I went over the defense response. It's a very thorough CV. Um, I thought the expert was very qualified to do what he did. Here's what I like about the expert. Um, he's worked frequently for both sides. He is not an expert that only works for the defense or only works for the prosecution or only works in this state or that state. He's regularly worked across across sides to survey jurors. So um, I found his background very interesting. I can understand why he was mad when he testified. I was like, wow, you're coming in hot. At the end of his testimony, that made more sense. But I, I, um, I, I, he has a tremendous amount of experience. Now, there are going to be discussions about whether the way that the surveys were done if that makes sense. And there are going to be different professions that survey in different ways that are like, I don't, we wouldn't survey that way or we wouldn't survey this way. But it seems that he was surveying to the standard that is court accepted for what they were doing. So we'll see. All right. Um, the state recently became aware of a telephone survey being conducted in Lataw County related to this matter when some of the recipients of such calls contacted the prosecuting attorney's office to express concern about the survey. Excuse me, why the fuck is someone calling me about this case? Especially if the entire community knows about it, they're on kind of high alert, which also might be part of the defense's point. The Moscow Police Department has also received calls expressing concern about such calls and questions as to whether the police department was responsible for the survey. That we didn't know. The members of the public were like, yo, are you doing this? Isn't that interesting? Based on the transcript, oh, let's see. See Exhibit A transcript. We saw some of that. Just this week, the state came into possession of a transcript of one such call and a summary from another who received such a call. Based on this transcript, the survey goes beyond soliciting information and provides those being called with specific information about the case. 
For example, the person conducting the survey asked the following questions. Have you read, seen, or heard if Brian Koberger was arrested at his parents' home in Pennsylvania? Have you read, seen, or heard if police found a knife, a knife sheath on the bed of one of the victims? Have you read, seen, or heard that DNA found on the knife sheath was later matched to Brian Koberger? Have you read, seen, or heard if Brian Koberger owned the same type of car recorded on video driving in the neighborhood where the killings occurred? The state raised the issue with the defense counsel and then met with defense counsel on March 21st. Defense counsel confirmed that the defense retained a jury research company to access community knowledge to assess, sorry, well, I guess both, to assess community knowledge <clears throat> and opinions about the case. The state expressed its concerns and notified counsel it would be raising concerns with the court. The state requested that the defense halt for their communication with potential jurors until the court could weigh in. Defense counsel represented that the surveys were already mostly done in Lake Tahoe County, not in other counties. The state's concern with the survey commissioned by the defense is that it may violate this court's revised non-dissemination order in a manner that could make selecting a jury in Lake Tahoe County more difficult. The prosecution's worried that the defense is going to taint the jury pool to get what they want. Notice that the prosecution does not say they're not allowed to do a survey. They're not allowed to do um, a questionnaire. They're not allowed. He doesn't say they're not allowed to do this. He says doing this this way might violate this non dissemination order. If there's no non dissemination order, this motion does not happen, right? Because there's no other way to tell them not to because they have to prove if they're bringing a motion to change venue, they have to somehow prove that the venue needs to be changed. And surveying is one of the ways that can be done. As relevant here, the order expressly prohibits, quote, any agents of the prosecuting attorneys and defense attorneys from making any out of court statement, which a reasonable person would expect to be disseminated by means of public communication. They are saying that the questions essentially are statements. We know that. Despite these express prohibitions, the defense commissioned a survey that included potential jurors in Laytaw County and as part of the survey conveyed, quote, the identity or nature of evidence expected to be presented at trial, and then something is redacted. More problematic still, we're seeing this word pop up more and more in legal filings. It used to be troubling. Now it's problematic. More problematic still, the defense commissioned survey also included in the survey specific rumors kind of which is the point, right? If the public has heard rumors, the rumors, the innuendos, sorry, it all comes back to housewives. But if the jury pool has had specific rumors or heard specific rumors, and those are kind of lodged in their brain, like I can't remember, I can't forget this little factoid, even if it's never shown in court, can that bias or even unconsciously bias a juror to be like yeah but wasn't he doing this and you can't have those things pop up when they get back into the jury room this is something we're going to see discussed in the karen reed case you want to talk like the rumors the speculation the internet running wild on two different sides of a thing yeah there's a lot of information out there i don't know how factual it all is but there's a lot of information out there on that case like just circling this case going to trial. So trying to find a jury that doesn't have some of those little things stuck in their brain takes time. And so this is exactly the point. The point is that the media is reporting things that are not factual. We can have a whole conversation about the 24 hour news cycle later. And the state is like, but they're, they're asking things that aren't factual. And the defense is like, right. Because we need to know if people think the things that aren't factual are factual, because you can't disprove it because it's you, you trying to disprove something that doesn't exist in trial where you can't address it head on is difficult. And this is why I, um, really like sticking to covering court documents. If I'm going to speculate on something, I will tell you I'm speculating. Normally there's a sound effect. But taking the facts and then spinning them into speculation because you need 10 stories covering one case in a day isn't helpful, in my opinion, to anyone. 
at all. It doesn't help the cases. It doesn't help the um, society. It doesn't help any of us. And it makes it harder for juries. Trying to find the facts in a sea of fuckery isn't always easy. And in these cases, it's my, go. I didn't know I was going to rant. In high profile cases, particularly, it is my opinion that the defense deserves, in every case, a fair and equitable trial. That includes a fair jury. The victims deserve a fair and equitable trial. That includes an unbiased jury. All of the people who are going to get dragged in to testify, and in Koberger, it is going to include the surviving roommates who survived the horror of their roommates being murdered. Whether Brian Koberger murdered them or not is yet to be determined. They were murdered. That is not in question. That is not in controversy. And they are going to have to testify. They deserve to know the facts of what happened to their roommates. The victim's parents deserve answers. They deserve a fair trial and they deserve justice. And justice is not convicting someone who didn't do it. Justice is getting to the heart of the, th of the thing. Justice is finding answers and hopefully giving people closure and holding the person that you can prove is responsible for the thing to it. The swirling fuckery in cases, I do not see how it helps any of those goals. I do not see how it helps the trial. I do not see how it helps find answers. I do not see how it helps. And there is a difference between fuckery and reasonable conclusions. There is a difference between asking questions and fuckery. There's a difference between looking at the facts of a case and being like, but what about this and what about that? And do these things connect? That is different. But I think when we look at the facts, there is opportunity for restraint. These things will go to trial. And then we will see. But this is also why when things go to trial, the public needs to be able to see. And this is going to be a problem in the upcoming political trials. This would be a problem Imagine if Depp v. Heard wasn't televised. Imagine if Karen Reed, I mean, the general public isn't horribly divided on the Reed case yet. The internet that's been paying attention to the case is, the community seems to be. Imagine if that wasn't televised. How would anyone believe that the result is fair? This is gonna happen in political cases. If you put on a political trial of a political figure or a former president and do not let the public see what happens, there will always be a portion of the public who will not believe that the outcome is just because they will not have seen it for themselves. And they will not believe the media reporting about it because they will believe that the media reporting is skewed. And so unless you let people see it for themselves, they will not believe the outcome. And that is not helpful to us as a society, in my opinion, or to our system. If people want to see what's happening, let them see what's happening. And then if they disagree with the reporting, fine. If they disagree with the outcome, fine. Fine, disagree with the outcome. You don't get to make the decision, but you can be like, you know what, I, I actually believe that witness. Maybe the jury didn't, or I interpreted that differently. Fine, let people understand. But if you keep people out, they are not going to believe it and they are going to feel lied to, and that is not helpful for anyone. Transparency is needed. It's very much why I want to cover the Karen Reed case, because if there is a case that needs transparency to answer questions, it is that, which is why I'm going into it as a juror. We'll talk about that when we get to questions. Let's finish up this Koberger motion. No matter what you think about a case, a fair trial is critical. Trying to find a fair trial for an unpopular defendant becomes more difficult and is the most important thing, right? You need to know that when a unsympathetic or unpopular defendant is convicted, 
they are being convicted based on the facts that are proven in court and they are being convicted beyond a reasonable doubt not that they are being convicted because they look creepy or because people decided the case before any of the facts came forward that's not justice for anyone and that fuckery will normally get cut through on appeal 10 years from now and that doesn't do anyone any good imagine the pain for the victims families to get a conviction to start to heal and then to have that overturned and have to go through it all again it's awful transparency is needed transparency is needed all right let's go back i will stop ranting about transparency and get back to Koberger. look it's why i like to look at the court filings and look at what's happening in court i want to know the facts and then if we want to talk about some fuckery later we'll just do it later there's room for that not here not in these cases but in some cases yeah there's definitely room for fuckery and we'll we can talk about that too all right we've just got to parse the two Tef said who do we trust to cover political figures cases cameras in the courtroom for me put cameras in the courtroom and let people if there's look put cameras in the courtroom and let people see what's going on because the country is so divided that people aren't going to believe what's going on put cameras in the courtroom there's a reason the U.S. wanted public access to the courtroom and if you look at the history of our legal system you will see the history that we come from and the founders very much said we need the public to have access to the courtrooms well technology makes that available for everybody so let it be like federal courts what are you what are you scared of and even if even if federal courts were like look i don't know about cameras man fine send out an audio feed send out an audio feed why not our largest cases happen in federal court it would stand to reason then that it's even more important to have access to federal courts which is not easy to access okay i'm done for the moment i mean i'm not done but i'm done for the moment transparency is needed let the people see what's happening but I'm not done. Fuck. I'm not done. But if the internet continues to insert themselves into cases, it gives the federal system room to say, but see what's happening over there. See, this is why we can't have nice things. And that's the push and pull of transparency, right? Because if you have people actively trying to insert themselves into a case, emailing the judge, filing motions to intervene, pretending to be jurors on Reddit, calling in bomb threats, Murdoch, which is essentially just swatting, but court, because it's streaming, the federal courts will continue to look at it and say, no. The public can walk in here and then we can see eye to eye who's watching this case and everyone else can deal with it you can walk into the courtroom where we can see you and where if you fuck up with the rules we can put you in custody because once cases go go broader than that and are streamed transparency is what i think is good the internet sometimes will internet and it gives judges room to say, if the internet's interneting, fuck this. I don't want my court, I don't want my court interrupted. I don't want the jurors to be doxxed. I don't want all of these issues that come with streaming because the internet can't control itself. Inserting yourself into these cases, the, the law nerds would literally never. We're just observers and we should be and see what happens but there's a balance to that that i think the courts are afraid of and i don't i don't know where the answer is on the balance because it wastes court time right when the court in daryl brooks has to stop and address a reddit thread of somebody pretending to be a juror in the case 
it wastes court time. When the court has to hold a Rule 11 hearing in Daybell because somebody filed a motion to intervene and they need to be sanctioned, it wastes court time. It slows all of this down and stretches thin resources already thinner, right? So there's a problem with that. Um, Witness talked about the Paltrow case. You know what? The internet didn't really fuck with that case at all. It just kind of happened. It was great. It was just, it just happened. It was great. It just played out. And then some people were commenting on her outfits, but it just played out. Hmm. Uh, the Woods Witch, Emily, do you believe there will come a day that AI will be the jury? I don't think our constitution allows for it because AI is not your peer. I don't think our constitution allows for it. So we don't live in minority report. I mean, unless you're the TikTok psychic, and then I guess it is kind of us living in minority report. That's a conversation for a different. Let's, let's finish this. <laughs> let's finish this. And let's go from there. Um, we do have some rules and some boundaries. Um, so art by Julie E said, juror doxing is horrible. Innocent people doing their civic duty and all of a sudden being made public bully threatened. It's sickening. I feel the same way about witnesses and experts. Um, which is why we do things differently here. I know from the cases I've covered that witnesses who are done testifying will watch our feeds. will watch our chat. I've had witnesses in cases say, thank you, your chat was kind, because the internet can be awful. The internet involving themselves in the experts that testify is going to limit the quality of experts we see in court, because if you're a great expert and it's like, hey, this is a high profile case, why the fuck would you bother? Why would you bother? You can look at what happened in the Depp v. Heard case or others, why would you bother? If if it were me, I would look at everything that happened and went, no, I'll stick to depositions in cases that aren't going to be televised. Uh, and that is, I think, bad for the cases, right? If you can't find great experts because they don't want to deal with the internet, that's their choice. I get it, but it's not great. <sighs> You know, the internet brigading the reviews on Dr. Spiegel. I didn't like Dr. Spiegel at all. Terrifying. But we can just be like, oh, this is, this guy can't, this is awful testimony. It, it, my opinion doesn't need to then be a Google review. His school could handle how he testified. It's not like they're not going to see it. They know him. They'll, whatever. I can have an opinion. There's no need to go real world with people for fuck's sake. Don't go real world, real world with people. All right. Oh, yes, no, Spiegel wasn't good. But there's no need to call his office with death threats. I mean, again, the law nerds would never. Okay, let's continue on. Where was it? Oh, was it problematic apparently sent me into a tear. I've ranted so much that the Blue Jay has shown back up and scared away everybody else. Uh, Nanner said, oh my God, people did that. Yes. Yes, they did. And um, people were, the thing I appreciate about this chat is they stuck to the things Spiegel was saying and we were able to evaluate the things Spiegel was saying. Like, how in the world are you saying that? Are you telling me that you did a psychoanalysis of Johnny Depp based on Pirates of the Caribbean? Get out of here. We were able to evaluate the testimony. It was great because we evaluated the testimony. The testimony was awful, but we evaluated the testimony. No need to go further than that. And that's what we're going to do in this next trial. And it's going to be hard. And we'll talk about that when we get to Q&A because I have lots more to say. More problematic still. <laughs> problematic. Emily rants on the internet for 15 minutes. Sorry. The Defense Commission survey also included a survey of specific rumors, right? And the defense is saying that they need to because they need to know if those rumors are lodged in the brains of the jurors. For example, the question that implies, quote, Brian Koberger had followed one of the victims on social media. The survey also pointed respondents to out-of-courtroom coverage of this case that almost certainly contains more rumors and misinformation that would not be admissible at trial. Have you listened to any true crime broadcast or watched any shows on YouTube that cover this case? For example, the King Road killing 
question mark. What is the King Road killing? Is that like a docu-series? Is it a podcast? I don't know what that is. I have thoughts about cutesy names too. Anyway, given I, I have all the thoughts today, apparently. Given the survey of potential jurors seems to violate the order. Seems is not a very strong legal land language. Seems is not strong legal language. Podcast, thank you, chat. It's a podcast. It seems, that's couched, it seems to violate the order. The state respectfully requests the court to enter an order prohibiting the defense from contacting potential. I think jurors and a word got cut off. Given the survey of the potential jurors seems to violate the order. Oh, okay. That's weird. The way the signature page is weird. Um, the court entered an order specifically prohibiting the defense from contacting potential jurors without obtaining leave from the court. And we don't have leave from the court yet. So that is signed by Bill Thompson and Jeff Nye, the prosecutor guy. All right. That's the new filing. It's basically what happened at the hearing, which is fine. Um, the court has not ruled on that yet. The second the court rules on it, we will probably be covering trial and I will cover it at some point. Um, let's see. Impossible princess said you did warn us at the beginning of the stream that you were going to be spicy today. I'm definitely in a spicy mood today. We're in a, we're, we're, we're in a, in a bit of a spicy mood. So when we get to the ruling on this, I'm sure y'all will let me know. We'll figure it out. It's going to happen during this next trial. Um, what seems to be the case with the Reed trial? Let's talk about that real quick before we get into Q&A. Let's just talk about the Reed case real fast. All right. Karen Reed is still in jury selection. There's no court today. It seems that the court has said, I need to verify, but it seems that that distancing language, that the court is going to have full court days on Monday and Wednesday half court days on Tuesday and Thursday, and no jury on Friday. It is unclear to me, and this is something I'm going to, I am going to endeavor to discover today. It seems that on Fridays, the court is leaving aside time to deal with motions, exhibities, evidence, and whatever. I think it's appropriate because then the, um, then the trial days can kind of be more jam-packed. If it's, hey, we're not going to stop for an hour while the jury is here to argue over this motion. That's going to happen on Friday. Why is the court also doing half days? I don't know. I don't know what the court's other calendar looks like. I don't know if this is a trial court that is cleared for just this trial or if they have to run other motions. This is why this case is going to last eight weeks because they are really only running three days of trial a week. But the one day off will mean that those trial days should go more smoothly. There shouldn't be as many sidebars and it should just be more jam packed with witness testimony so that if things come up that need to be addressed, they'll be addressed on Friday. I don't know if the court is going to allow the motion argument on Fridays to be streamed or not streamed In depth v. heard they only streamed what was, um, before the jury except for like the arguments over jury instructions and stuff we saw some of that so um mcgee said mcgee p said eight i thought it was supposed to be five the attorneys estimated five to six weeks the court told the jurors six to eight um and when they told the jurors six to eight, they said trials can end early. I think six to eight um, accounts for the fact that they are only really running three court days. Because that is not a lot, but I think it accounts for the fact that they are only running three court days. So it is going to take some time, but there is going to be some downtime. The case is already contentious. To a lot of those paying attention to it, again, the law nerds, what I have seen overwhelmingly is that the law nerds are like, oh, thank God there is somewhere to just follow what's happening in court. I just want to follow what's happening in court. 
I am not deep diving this case to what's going on outside of the case. I want to see what happens in trial. If we need to deep dive into other fuckery or other stuff going on with this case, after the verdict comes in, we can do that. Um, Maggie said, LOL, it's Maggie. Did I add letters? Maggie, I'm sorry. As I'm staring at the birds out the window, did I add letters? I might have. Apologies. Spicy brain. Sorry. I am not going to, and I've seen, look, the law nerds are all very kind and generous. We are, we as a community are probably going to get an influx like we did during Depth v. Heard. Uh, and the mods are prepared for that. The community is prepared for that. Everyone's prepared to be like, that's not what we do here. I am very mindful of the fact that witnesses, when they are done, watch this channel. Witness families watch this channel. The community watches this channel. And we are going to treat that with dignity. And we are going to treat that with respect. The thing that I notice the most, because that's what the law nerds do. And we'll just yeet anyone who doesn't adhere because that's not what we do here. We, as a community, can remind people that this is a different space on the internet because most people's default setting on the internet is to fight. We're not, we don't do that. We evaluate, we have questions, but we don't just come in with this side is this side and that's the only opinion in this case. I am very, very mindful of the fact that in this case, the thing that I cannot move on from and that I am like, that is just stuck in my gut are victim officer O'Keefe's niece and nephew that he was the caregiver for. Their mother passed away from cancer. Their father passed away shortly after from a heart attack and their uncle was murdered. Who murdered him? There's going to be a trial. We will see. It's heartbreaking to me that those kids are stuck in the middle of what is going to become an international media shit show. And they have lost all of their caregivers. So when we look at this case, and I know there are strong feelings on both sides, if this trial isn't fair, we'll see it. If this trial is fair, we'll see it. But the the cost of all of these cases is high, but the cost on the survivors of this case who are going to be witnesses in this case is incredibly high because of how divided their community is. And I can't imagine, I can't imagine how hard that is to be in a community that is so divided when you have gone through loss after loss after loss. The stories people have shared with me that live in this area about the friendships that they have lost over this trial hurts my heart. Because at the end of the day, this will go to trial. If this trial is not fair, if the evidence is not there, we will see it. Officer O'Keefe's family, his niece and nephews deserve answers. If the answers are that there is evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that it's Karen Reed, then that's the answer. If the answer is that there is not evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that it's Karen Reed, then at least we'll have an answer. And then we're gonna have a fuck ton more questions. I have a lot of questions. I have a lot of questions on this case. And there is room to enter this case with questions. Can the prosecution prove this case beyond a reasonable doubt? I don't know. I don't know if they can. And I want to see how they try to do it. Will the defense disprove most things in the prosecution's case? They, they well might. And we will see. But I am going into this case, and I know our community is going into this case. We've been through Depp Herd together. We know what an internet divided looks like. We know that, the, that we know that there is heavy interest, involvement, and division in this case. 
I am not going to bring anyone onto the channel to talk about this case until after the verdict and maybe not even then. I am going to watch the evidence come in as it will and evaluate it with all of you live. I'm going to tell you what the um, objections are, what the evidence is. We're going to evaluate witness testimony. We're going to see if people get excoriated on cross. We're going to see who we believe, who we don't believe. And then we're going to then we're going to see what the jury does and see if we agree. We are really an alternate jury. We're going to watch and see and ask questions. Some of you will come into this case with more context. Some of you won't. That's okay. But I'm not going to endeavor to bring that context to this case. The way, like a Murdoch case that I covered from so early on, I could bring context and be like, ooh, remember this, ooh, remember that. This is not a case for that, for me. This, for me, is a case of, can the prosecution prove this case? I have questions, and I don't know if they can. And we're going to see. And that's it. That's how I'm doing this case. So if where there is helpful information or not helpful information, I'm not going to bring it up either. So I appreciate people on the podcast being like, but there's this and there's this and there's this and there's this and there's this. Okay. There might well be. And if all of those things exist, we will see it in trial. And if those don't, if those things don't exist, then we won't. All of the information that is known about a case does not come before the jury ever. The rules of evidence do not allow for everything that may be known to come before the jury. And that's the point. Verifiable evidence. We talked about this a lot with Rule 701 with the TikTok psychic. Verifiable evidence. So, alternate jury, we get to sit and watch the evidence come in. We get to just see. And I'm going to be brutally protective of that. Just like they're going through seat and eat with the jury right now, which is going to be my new name for voir dire, which we talked about in one of the other cases. I just don't remember which. Just like they're going through seat and eat, that is, that is what's going to happen here. We can't evaluate this case yet. Nothing has come to court. There's no evidence in yet. The prosecution says X, Y, Z. The defense says ABC. We'll see what comes in. And that's how I'm taking it. And I'm not going to take in stuff from outside. We're going to watch how the parties engage. She has a very good defense team. I want to see how they do this trial. I don't know these prosecutors. I know that there's a a looming federal investigation. That's not something that I'm unaware of. The jury might not know that. But it's one of those things where I'm like, how is this going to play in? Because we're going to see defense experts, we're going to see the defense calling people who came in to the federal case. That's unique. It's still surprising to me this case is going to trial. I have a ton of questions. I'm going in with I have questions. If those questions don't get answered, then that's doubt. And that's it. If those questions do get answered, then that might not be doubt. So, um, Anthony, <laughs> Anthony says, waiting for, <laughs> waiting for strangers to come in saying EDB talks too much. It's going to happen daily. It's going to happen daily. Um, it's going to happen daily. Question, is her defense team her own lawyers or defense from the state her own lawyers? Thank you for coming to EDB's TED Talk. I just thought it was helpful to talk about how I'm approaching this case because you, uh, so many of you want to do that too. And I am very, very protective of it. And I'm very protective of this community. And I, I will continue to be. And it's okay. Look, there's a lot of people who come into this community and are like, oh, wait, wow, this is a different place on the internet. Great, I love it here. And there's some that come in and are like, well, what the fuck is this? It's like, oh, no, yeet. That's fine. It is never my goal on YouTube to have more people in chat or to have more subscribers. It is always my goal to have more law nerds and lots of law nerds find us through trials 
And there are law nerds out there that want to just understand what is. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to understand what is because right now, what is, is very confusing in this case. And everyone involved in this case deserves the facts of the case to be known. And I think that's the only way we come to any understanding of what happens. So, um, and we get comfy chairs and snacks and, and stretchy pants. Like it's way better. Like it's way better. So no, I am very much a hard stop on the fuckery in this case. Um, going into this case from the perspective of we need to see what happens is not going to be popular with everyone. I mean, the law nerds are like, love it. We're here for it. We'll see it. I'm going to ignore all of it. We just do our own thing. But other law nerds will find us and be like, ooh, we love these things. We love being able to just watch a trial, understand the law, and see the facts, and not get into all the swirling otherness and uh, fuckery. So... That's how I'm approaching that. A lot of you are asking to go quickly over the billing for the um, texting judge. So we'll do that and then we'll get to questions. MB, thank you. I love your coverage, love your heart and compassion and integrity. Thank you. Compassion is what's needed. Can you imagine? Like just, I can't, again, I have a teen. I can't, um, I just can't stop thinking about what this community is being pulled through, what these kids are being pulled through. I can't, I can't stop thinking about that. And there, everyone deserves a place to watch this trial and have a conversation about the facts. There will be plenty of places on the internet to just go dunk on people. This is not that place. There's plenty of places for that. There's not enough places for this because it's, it's honestly harder. It requires boundaries. It requires not just looking for numbers, but looking for community. And it's not as easy. And that's okay. We like hard. Don't worry, we'll have Nightbot is going to have a whole bunch of new stuff to say. And I will be reminding people. And y'all will be like, hey, we don't do that here. And the mods will be yeeting as needed. And it'll be it'll be fine. Look, we had over 300,000 people here with us during Depp v. Heard. It was fine. It's fine. And it will be fine here. Um, if we need to block words on name calling, we'll block words on name calling. Like we have a lot of resources where we can just have a conversation. It's fine. And the community will be fine and we'll meet some new law nerds. It'll be great. So, but it's gonna, I can already like, I sent a hog a gif of, um, I can feel it coming in the air tonight. I can feel it with this case. You can feel the ramp up. Like, I, at some point, the drums are going to drop, like on week four, and the rest of the rest of society is going to figure out on this case, and you'll see it. I can. It's going to start with 20, 30,000 in the chat. Then it's going to be 50, and then we're going to be in those 100-plus numbers. You can feel it. We're going to see it where it's like, doo-doo, 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 doo-doo. I can feel it. We're going to see it. It's going to happen right in the middle somewhere. And we're going to be like, oh, shit. <laughs> We've reached escape velocity. Um, I don't think Pootie is name calling. Here's why. <laughs> Poot was his nickname in college. I don't know. Poot was his nickname in college. <laughs> so that's where we're at. EDB, where's George? He's my George's twin. Um, as I said, kiddos are home from school today, so George is with humans, not me. Also, um, my desk is is covered in things, so it's harder to get to the birds today. So I didn't think Phil. Co oh, I should put the drums on the soundboard. You know what? I'll test it out. I'm gonna do a tech check. Um, I'm gonna do a tech check probably with the members because I'm gonna try something else for streaming the trial. We're gonna see. Um, I'm gonna try another yet another um monitor to see what i can do so i might see if i can add the i might see if i can add it poot is also an abbreviation of his name that is true um i generally nickname oh i'm definitely the backup human kate i am the backup human i am not the primary human i'm the backup human 
which was kind of the goal with Fred and George, because um, I am I am the I am the backup back. I'm like the third backup human for Fred and George. Um, Travis and Griffin are primary humans. <laughs> I am not, which is fine. Um, I had a beloved cat for 17 years and she was my ride or die. And the rest of the family is like the two of you. And I'm like, yeah, uh, it's us against the world. Let us girls be. So when, uh, when T was like, I really want to get other cats. I want you to not, I want them to be my cats. I want them to like, I want to build a bond with my cats. I was very mindful to make sure that he kind of took the lead on caregiving and building his relationship with the cats, but they gravitated to towards him immediately because you can't tell cats what to do. <laughs> they gravitated to him immediately. He's kind of gingery. T was born a uh, little bit, little bit red, little bit redheaded. Uh, so his hair's a little gingery, and his ginger cats, they all just get each other. Um, so it's great. Dr. B and I are kind of the the backups on all of this. So there if i sit on the couch though i'm definitely primary human it depends <laughs> but i am not there number one number one so um with all of that the read trial as a community we are ready for um it's going to be interesting i don't know when they will be done with uh seat and yeet which is our new my new phrase for jury selection which i don't remember which case it came from <sighs> But when they are done with seat and eat, we will um, do opening statements and then we will be covering the case top to bottom, gavel to gavel. And the podcast will be my way to keep up on other cases. So there will be new podcasts during the week. And that will be where I kind of catch you up to date on all the other stuff. So was it Murdaugh that seat and eat started? I think it might've been, cause that's what it is. Um, <laughs> you sit, you yeet, but they're at 12. They need four more that might take a full day on Monday. It might not. So this is my last time to remind. No, it's not. I'm going to remind you all the time. Get the Lawnard app. My feelings are not hurt. If you download it for one trial and use it for that trial and then are like, I just know where to find you on the days I'm available. My feelings are not hurt. Lawnardapp.com or go into your app store and put Lawnard app. The Law Nerd app will keep you up to date on when I am streaming. The unknown here is when opening statements start and then if anything else pops off, but it will all be in the Law Nerd app. What we will do with the Law Nerd app during trial is keep you in the loop on what witnesses are coming in so that if there's a day where you need to like dip out on, on all of the foundational evidence, was this thing recovered at this place, which actually in this case is going to be um, more compelling and needed testimony then in like Murdaugh, which was a day of where did you find this casing and where did you find that casing? And is it this number? Like the slogging days of um, laying foundation in this case is actually not going to be as slogging because all of it is kind of in controversy and all of it is a little weird. So with all of that, we will keep you in the loop. Momo said, I thought the jury in Reed was seated yesterday. They need alternates and they ran out of peoples yesterday. So they need alternates and they have to pick those. Will they be done Monday morning and start opening Monday afternoon? Maybe, will they not? Maybe not, but I will let you know. If they start Monday afternoon, we're gonna fire up a stream and we're gonna go. We are going to ride. But court is off today and um, I will keep you in the loop. Let's go to the texting judge and take a look at what, what costs so much. Um, Real quick, where is my link that I'm looking for? No. Did I name this case? Did I name my case file for this case texting judge? Yes. Yes, I did. I will tell my teen story after we finish this. Let's do texting judge first and then I'll tell what happened um, with me and with T. So I'm going to pull up the docket real quick. We're going to get to the punchline first. For those of you that aren't familiar, let's talk. Texting judge was a new judge in Oklahoma, is called texting judge because literally during a murder trial on the bench, she was sitting there texting, not just texting, but texting and talking shit 
about the witnesses, the attorneys, talking shit to her bailiff, had predetermined cases, was posting about cases that were active cases on Facebook, which is completely inappropriate. Um, the level of inappropriate is so extreme. Just so extreme. I, I have never seen anything like this. This is the wild, which is why nobody could stop talking about it. This is the wild case, wildest case of judicial discipline that I have ever seen. The behavior was wild. And even in the responses to this extensive motion of uh, judicial impropriety, she was like, Ugh, but judge so-and-so did this. And she continued to throw other people under the bus without taking any accountability for her behavior. It was the cringiest, most teenage bullshit I have ever seen. It was just, just mean girl nonsense from a 50 year old judge. It was horrifying. And then she's like, ah, I get, she was met talking about a case in a Facebook group. And it seemed in the Facebook group that she had prejudged an issue that she had not issued a ruling on yet, completely inappropriate. And people told the defense attorneys about it. And she was like, oh my God, you guys, I guess there's no safe place for me to post because you went and told on me, essentially. And the defense attorney was like, you're talking about my case that you haven't made a ruling in yet as if you've made a ruling on it in a Facebook group. Things you can't do for 500, Alex. No. Facebook is not a safe space for you to vent your feelings about a case and to make quippy commentary. And it was like, <laughs> don't insult a room full of gang members, lol. Ma'am? What? If you need a safe space to chat, Your Honor, oh, I'm sorry. Um, you've been yeeted off the bench and never can hold um, that position again. So um, if you need a safe space to chat your dishonor, get a fucking therapist. They're a very safe space to chat. That's your safe space. That's your safe space. Other judges. You can chat with other judges. Facebook is not uh, your safe space. Facebook is not for you to talk about your cases. Sp Facebook really as a judge is not where you should be. And the rights of judges shift. When you become a judge, there are things you can and cannot do in the public forums. You don't get to just wild out on Facebook and comment on things you haven't ruled on yet. That's not, that's not okay. Is she still allowed to practice law? Yes. For now. I haven't seen any disbarment proceedings come up, but she is never allowed to be a judge again. Rachel in the chat said dishonor on her, dishonor on her gavel. Oh, dishonor on her robe, dishonor on her pink chair, dishonor on her bailiff, dishonor on her cell phone. Ma'am. You need a flip phone, no text, no texting for you. So, uh, the people of the state of Oklahoma have to now bear the expense of this fuckery, which again, I, I'm waiting for like, I don't know, the county to sue her for attorney's fees. I want her to be sued for attorney's fees. I don't know how that would happen, but I want it to happen. The taxpayers should not have to bear this expense of her bullshit. There is no holding back today. Like zero, 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 none. Application for fees and expenses, an affidavit of Mac Martin. Hello, Mac Martin. Mac K. Martin was appointed by the court 
on the judiciary to be counsel for petitioner. Petitioner is the state of Oklahoma, the chief justice of the Supreme Court of the state of Oklahoma. In this removal action relating to Tracy with an I, Affiant has been a practicing attorney since May 18th, 1979. Sir, that is a storied career. Affiant's practice had been limited to the area of criminal defense since admission. The Affiant accepted appointment and proceeded to review the case materials. The investigative materials included over 5,000 pages of documents, hours and hours of audio recordings, video recordings, photographic evidence, and various differing forms of social media materials. 5,000 pages of documents. The way they built a case, this judge was on the bench for less than a year. And there's that much. Good God. In addition, there were complaints, responses, witness interviews, and other documents collected by the Council on Judicial Complaints. Affiant gathered additional information and found additional witnesses prior to filing a 50-page second amended petition. I went over every word of it. The case required extensive preparation for trial as petitioner and respondent listed in the pretrial order a total of over 149 witnesses for trial. Like, I don't know, everyone admitted to the bar in that area? Other judges, bailiff, court staff, lawyers, the following factors are to be considered by this court in determining fee, time and labor required, novelty and difficulty of the questions, skill requisite to perform the legal services, and they go on and list the other things considered. Counsel typically charges flat fees in his private practice, which is not uncommon, um, depending on what you're doing in, in criminal defense, that it's like this much for this type of case. When hourly fees are charged, counsel's billing rate is $550. That's not unreasonable at all. The affiant has attached an hourly billing statement setting forth the individual attorney's hourly statements. Billing statements begin October 30th and end February 13th, 2024. Also attached are expenses related to the service of trial subpoenas on witnesses. Mac K. Martin's total hours were 202 hours at a rate of $550 for a total of $111,100. Total expenses related to this matter are 2146 2146 is the... Um, is the just hard costs for filings, for subpoenas, et cetera. Time and labor required, reviewing, indexing, and obtaining an understanding of the over 5,000 pages of documents, hours and hours of audio recording, video recording, photographic evidence, that is extensive. The novelty or difficulty of the question, the removal of a trial judge rarely occurs. The question presented was complicated and that the removal of this judge needed to occur while protecting the integrity and dignity of all other sitting judges in the state of Oklahoma. The skill required, the judge had a team of two tri experienced attorneys. Her other attorney was also a Tracy with an I, by the way. There was Tracy with an I lawyer and Tracy with an I yeeted judge. And William Wells and other professionals representing her position. Counsel for the petition had the assistance of this law partner in a limited role and in a joint capacity in certain instances, there was minimal assistance from other individuals. It's like, I'm all alone. There's a whole team and I'm all alone. The fact that Tracy with an eye found another Tracy with an eye to defend her, the fact that multiple attorneys were like, yeah, we'll defend you. Everyone deserves an attorney, but I can't imagine looking at this and being like, yeah, I'll put my name on that. Stop. <gasps> The preclusion of other employment by the attorney due to the acceptance of the case in preparation for trial, counsel was virtually precluded from accepting new clients and had difficulty in maintaining existing clients and the daily caseload. Yeah, it's a substantial amount of work. The custom, the customary fee, whether it's fixed or contingent, the computation of the appropriate fee in this type of case should be based on an hourly rate. Prior fees from past trials have exceeded $90,000. None of these cases involve the volume of investigative materials and witnesses in review for prep of trial, and then they go through other removal of judge actions and the money spent on other removal of judge actions, and then distinguishing that this removal action is unique in the volume 
Um, so they are asking for the expenses of over $2,000 and over $111,000. This is the billable description. Emily, why did you never want to go into private practice? I'm sorry, you want me to account for my time down to like tenths of an hour or whatever? Sixth of an hour? No. No. No, I'm not. No, time is a construct. It takes as long as it takes. Billable hours sound like misery business to me. I can't. Never. 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 It's never going to be me. Ever, ever. So the opposite of it's going to be me. Um, I have a funny story about this. Somebody said, does it include bathroom breaks? Yellow pill. I had a friend who was um, pregnant, well practicing, which, you know, as, as one does, and was horribly dehydrated. And I'm like, friend, I'm going to need you to not be dehydrated. And the response I got was, I know, but I can really only afford to go to the bathroom twice in my work day. I don't have, I'm so busy, I don't have the bandwidth to go to the bathroom more than like twice in a work day. So yes, most people build down to like six minute increments. I could never, never. So, but um, it was a, it was a, it, it was a consideration. Literally, I cannot, literally, I cannot. <laughs> For all of you billing hours, I'm sorry. I hate billable. I hate billables. Wait, can we look at that signature? It's a, yes. This is the notary. That's the lawyer. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah, I hate billables. This is the timesheet. And it is. Mm-hmm. For all of you asking questions about billables, I'm sure there are attorneys and paralegals and people who do billables in the chat. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. Never had to do it. Worked for the county. Didn't have to do billables. Got paid a salary. Some days I worked more. Some days I worked less. Sometimes I worked weekends. Sometimes I didn't. Just I like we need to get it done. Um, let's see. This is partial review of volume one of Council on Judicial Complaints investigative file email um, on review of the motion to recuse, motion for immunity, uh, all, all, all pick up and deliver discovery and evidentiary materials, prepare EOA and notice of delivery, conference calls, partial review, further review, review of plea transcripts. And then it's reviewing the underlying cases too, right? So these are underlying cases as well that had to be reviewed because that's some of the judicial complaints that were there. So it is an extensive amount of hours required. Continuation of review of investigative materials. Judge, I love that he spells her name Tracy with a Y, not Tracy with an I. <laughs> um, review of text messages the way I would live. Oh, there we go. There's Tracy with an I. Review of Tracy with an I's sworn statement. Continued review of reports. Continued review of reports. Just on and on and on. Drafting of petitions. Reviewing of draft. Look, reviewing of draft. Needed. Need you need to you need to you need to review. So oh, on and on and on. So, um, Rachel's saying someone in the chat, please explain. These are the billable hours to show the work that you did during the case. The billable hours are how much time you spent doing each thing in a case. So the lawyer is telling the judge, it cost me 202 hours to do this case at my billable rate. So the amount I need to be paid for doing this work is for 202 hours at my billable rate. And the billable rate is $550 an hour. And the court immediately approved, like two days later, fees and expenses of counsel for over $111,000. Uh, 
and this case settled. Whose lawyer is this? This is the lawyer for the Judicial Council. The Judicial Council was seeking to yeet and successfully yeeted the judge, former judge. Um, does it include clerks and paralegals if the attorney has them? Yes, those are normally billed at different hours. So in past coverage of the Britney Spears case, when I go through billables of like um, Holland and Knight, you will see the rates for the different attorneys. So if there's multiple attorneys, you'll see a rate for the senior attorneys, you'll see a rate for the more junior associates, you'll see a rate for the paralegals. So you'll see different rates. This attorney was like, it just me. Um, so over 111,000 in attorney's fees, 2,000 in hard costs. And the hard costs are the uh, things you have to pay for to get people subpoenaed and pay for filing fees and stuff like that. So I don't know. I think they, I'm interested to see if they attempt to recoup the attorney's fees or if there is a procedure for them to do so. I don't know. Let's get to Q and A real quick, uh, before I eat myself. Oh, there's a story I need to tell you. Let's get to Q and A, shall we? Let's, let's fact around. I'm gonna have to go find that. Um, I'm trying to pull up, I'm trying to find the demonstratives came up immediately. Fantastic. This video. I'm gonna have to mute that. We're gonna go, we're gonna have to go to YouTube soon. Um, cause I need to tell you this story. Let's see. I'm going to try to find the place in the stream that I need to be. Um, let's see, because that is part of the thing where I think we're just about there. Um, or in the video where I need to be, let's see, because it is part of the story. So I need my demonstratives. I need my exhibities. I think we have, we have queued ourselves up to the right place for exhibits. All right. Let me tell you the story real fast. I will. Thanks, Mingalina. What? Y'all. So had an appointment with my teen yesterday. After appointment with my teen, we went to go grab Sonic. Look, uh, I, there is some, a Sonic icy slushy situation with nerds in it is just a delightful treat as the weather starts to get hotter and I love it. So we went to Sonic to pick him up food after school to get me a slushy before we came home. And we were sitting in the car and since the car has such a large screen, the car has all of the entertainment options, including YouTube. So often when we are at Sonic, we will pop on a YouTube video, sit at Sonic, eat our Sonic in the car, um, watch a bit of a YouTube video and then head on out. It's, you know, it feels like a drive-in in in the Tesla. Love it so much. So as, as we are watching a video of a YouTuber that I had not heard of that my kid was like, do you watch so-and-so? I'm like, no. And he's like, oh my God, it's great. I love Nile blue, Nile red science channels, chemistry. This doesn't surprise me. My kid's in chemistry this year. Loves it. And he's like, one channel is like the like deep dive, like hardcore sciencey videos. And then one channel is like the ridiculous sciencey videos. So the YouTuber has a two channels, one for like the nerdy, more specific chemistry stuff, and one for the fun chemistry stuff. So my kids like Nile blue, Nile red, love it. And I'm like, haven't heard of this channel. Sounds amazing. Let's do it. And there's a video on the Nile blue channel of this creator making chocolate. I was like, I am so curious. And my kids explaining that this creator and like their friends have a massive like warehouse where they all make, they all have like cordoned off different sections of the warehouse where they do cool science shit like together as friends. I'm like, this sounds so cool. Like imagine just having like a warehouse with all your friends and it's like, we have all the equipment we need to do all the experiments we want to do in the world. And like a break room where you can hang out with your friends, like 10 out of 10 best creator plan ever. Love it. So my kid doesn't love, 
does Niall count as a real YouTuber? I need to ask my youngest, but for my oldest, yes. Um, so my kid, every time um, they they came out to bring food and he immediately like swipes the video down on the, uh, he swipes the video down on the car. And I'm like, buddy, like, what are we doing swiping the video down? Like, we're just watching someone make chocolate. Like, you're right. Trying to figure out, hold on, trying to figure out how to make chocolate from these. Bust them open. Love it. How are we going to do this? Love this the most. So, God. this is the video we're watching. We have six of them. Which one do we start with? Let's start with the big one. You're right. And the second time my kid swipes down the screen as they are getting ready to crack these open. I think you just got to bash him. And I'm like, Travis, I, why are you worried about the screen being up while somebody's like just dropping off our food? And I make the comment, because 16 year old, it's not like we're watching porn. Like what, what are you, like you're swiping out of this video like it's something to be ashamed of. And then the video resumes with this. Oh. And then this. <laughs> oh no. What? And I fucking died. He had swiped out of the video as, as what was being delivered to our car was being delivered. I make a joke to my 16 year old. And when we resume the video, we resume the video literally oh. here. <laughs> And I thought, oh no, I was, what? I was going to be ill. I laughed so hard. I have not laughed that hard in quite a long time. My, my teeth was dying. Neither of us have ever seen this video before. And I died. I absolutely died. I absolutely died. So, um, so, so we continue watching this uh, video. That's kind of gross, right? That, what? <laughs> and, and I can't recover at this point. I still haven't recovered. <laughs> I'm, I'm still not done. I just. Should I try one? Yeah. <laughs> so, so that, that is, um, that look, <laughs> it just, I, I don't know how the timing worked out, but it was absolutely spectacular. Um, at the end, he, he ends up making both dark and milk chocolate. It looks pretty good not to spoil it. Um, so Nile blue, there's also a Nile red channel that has all of the stuff. Um, this video has been sponsored by, I have not laughed so hard and it, my sides hurt. My kid hurt. I was vaguely worried. I might pee. Like I, it was that, it was that level of laughter. And then the best part of all of this was that when Dr. B got home, he looked at T he's like, so what did you guys watch in the car when you went to Sonic? <laughs> and then T retold the story to Dr. B and it was absolutely hilarious. So then it was just funny watching T try to retell it. It was, it was so funny, but it was, Travis made a crack at me the other day and I was like, shit, he's watching my content. Um,
he was talking about his Winter Guard show and one of the guard directors held up a book when they were trying to get their uh, guard to line up with them. And so they kind of held up a book so they could be seen. And he's like, mom, so this guard director's holding up a book and it's one of the books in your secret audible account. I was like, damn it. I have been discovered. It was one of the books from A Court of Thorns and Roses. It was one of the Akatar books. I don't remember which one it was, but he was like describing the cover as this guard instructor was like holding up uh, one of the, which, which one is the pink one? <laughs> um, it was one holding up one of the books to get their guard to get into line. And I was like, oh my God. <sighs> my secret. Um, anyway, it was hilarious, but it was also, oh, A Court of Wings and Ruins is the pink one. It was hilarious to me that one of the guard, um, one of the guard instructors is at the guard comp just holding up A Court of Wings and Ruins and being like, okay, everybody, line up. So funny. It was so funny. So he's like, no, it's one of the books in your, in your secret Audible account. I'm like, child. If you want to read the books in the secret audible account, you can go buy the, like you can buy the books. I'm not going to tell you what to not read. However, I know that this is what the, the other members of your guard are reading. Um, but I kind of also am not mad that the teens are just like grabbing their books and taking them to school. Like they're like, I don't care. Like, I'm not, I'm not bothered. Hilarious. Anyway. So I almost died um in my car yesterday because i could not breathe and my sides hurt and i almost i almost died so um <laughs> there were just moments so i kind of love that the kids are just like whatever and i told trav i'm like look if look there are some that are like a hard pass because uh hmm. but there are some that if if you're curious what the other members of your guard are reading that's fine like whatevs whatevs but there are some that you're going to, uh, I'm going to need you to wait till you're just a little bit, a little bit older, sort of. So anyway, so my kid has called me out. It, parenting is always humbling. Um, there's times when you guys are like, oh my God, you're so real. I'm like, D there's no other way. <laughs> Cause my kids will remind me. Um, there's a, there, the, there's no other way to be. We know we need to keep going. Um, we need to keep going through uh questions rachel's like i was reading smutty manga when i was at exactly i mean you know it's not like my kid and his friends don't watch a ton of anime I... so and we were yes and we were reading flowers in the attic i mean i don't know i'm not really worried about you know the akatar series based on my what i was reading <laughs> so there are there are guardrails there are some things that i'm like um that might be a bit extreme but there are some that might be you know that aren't going to be out of line with the you know anime that you're already watching so all righty with all of that <laughs> it's time jesse's like i read the end race uh sleeping beauty when i was in junior high look when i look back at the songs i was singing out loud um it is what it is. There are some that I would like, mm, I would like to protect you just a little bit more if I can. But also there are some that I'm like, oh, all right, well, look, books are books. It's fine. It's good. It's all going to be fine. We need to get to questions. We need to get to questions. And, and again, look, I'm in that, the, a lot of us are in that generation where we're basically raised feral. We're fine most of the time. Our therapist help us get there. It's, it's all good. Uh, Ty said, I also have a George Tabby. He used to be basketball shaped. He always tells me when bedtime is, I hope he watches the trial with me while I work. I hope that he will. And um, that's amazing. We lo look, it's so funny because my friends who are, are dog lovers um, are very specific about their breed and the, all of the characteristics of the different breeds of dogs and whatever. And I'm just over here like, orange cats are funny. <laughs> but 
orange cats are very specific. Um, the orange cats are are uh, spicy. Yellow pill, good to see you. Astronomy involves precise measurements of celestial bodies, the moon and stars, and correlate them with time and distance. Theoretically, with the right expert location and time could be determined if he has a good enough pick of the night sky. This is a very excellent point. I mean, the metadata should also do it, but this is a very excellent point. Maybe they can subpoena the stars. Well, maybe they get the expert to explain where the stars would be. I mean, some things are finite. Um, let's see. Emily, can you please look into the attorney who embarrassed who embarrassed well or himself while trying to insert himself into the Chad Daybell case yesterday? I looked at Lawyer You Know, Peter over at Lawyer You Know's video about it in the Daybell case, for those of you watching, an attorney tried to intervene. We saw this in Koberger when the media intervened and was like, um, can we not with this non-dissemination order? Interveners, more common in civil, more rare in criminal. Like there's no reason to intervene. You're not a lawyer for the defense or the prosecution. Like, what are you doing here? You don't go here. And um, got sanctioned to pay all the attorney's fees for all the time that they wasted. And I think that that's an appropriate sanction. The judge was pissed. I'm not surprised. I highly recommend Parrot YouTube. It makes me so happy. That sounds amazing. As long as the expert doesn't just flip the phone around, aka the Murdoch trial, the fact that that testimony came in still hurts my head. It's like, what did you do? Oh, I just like, oh my God, Emily, don't do that towards your camera. I just like threw it around my office. How is that scientifically derived? How? How? So Joe Jersey, excellent point. Just because I like how we um, had almost every moment from Murdoff from the phone download and apparently almost nothing from Koberger's, we will see. Uh, yes, there was a lot going into Murdoff. With Koberger's, we're going to be going in pretty cold. Um, Google Maps, 31-minute drive from the park to 1122 King Road. Good to know. It's kind of interesting because the park closes at dusk, right? Also good to know. If Murdoff taught us anything, they'll subpoena a card data to prove the movements of the car one way or the other. I think we'll see that for sure. Um, cell phone data makes it an alibi. Cell phone data helps for sure. Um, I mean, that's, I don't even know if it needs to be filed with an alibi defense though. It's really, it's really just their case. But I mean, that's again, me being picky. Troy, thank you for the gift of memberships. Um, Randa from Iowa, good to see you. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you, chat. Um, 11, when I need the breakdown, you're first. <laughs> I, I'm not sure what we were talking about, but yes. Danielle said an old friend of mine was sentenced to 12 plus years this week, and I'm struggling to accept the verdict because I didn't see the trial. Danielle, I'm sorry about that. That is incredibly difficult. Um, and yes, it's really hard. It's really hard to reconcile when you can't see it. Um, and I think transparency is very, very needed. Julie said, never forget armpit coroner. Y'all, the things we have seen in trials, I did a lot of my own cases. I was in court day in and day out for a, you know, a decade more working as a law clerk before I became an attorney. I spent a lot of time in court in my life and every case we've watched still has moments that surprise me. And I'm like, I, what is happening? Dr. Spiegel looking at the judge being like, do I have to answer that? Like what? Is every case has these moments where I'm like, oh my God, this isn't really happening. And this case is going to have those moments too. And we get to talk about them live here. Like you saw it here first. Um, other solo said per a friend, the park is pronounced wah, wah, we, wah, wah, why, wah, wah, we, wah, wah, why. Sure. Um, Melissa S said, I just got into law school. Woohoo. Hold on. Where's the applause? The applause, applause, applause. Congratulations. Melissa um let's see replay crew this evening nearly three hours behind it's okay some cherry pepsi max and some i can't i don't that sounds good i don't know um deathly allergic but i love your cats see they're good from this side of the screen i do have dogs i'm allergic to them too but not as bad as cats cat allergies like pet allergies are the worst it just gets everywhere did you see jelly roll was sued i did we're gonna swoop into it at another time but i did um, we'll see if I can be objective. If I can, I'll just be like, don't come for jelly roll. Let's see. Let's evaluate the case. Um, we should do a memorable EB EDB trial moments Oscars one day. That would be fun to do an award show for the, the trial moments. 
Um, Moo Boy Moo said, EDB, when Pokemon Go was new, me and three friends went to a golf course in the middle of the night in Provo, Utah for a Bulbasaur nest. Uh, this was before the loading screen warned us not to trespass. Golf courses were hot for Pokemon Go early days. They really were. And it was like, I'm not messing anything up. I'm not messing anything up. The Jelly Roll lawsuit is a trademark thing, is a name. It's over Jelly Roll, Jelly Roll versus Jelly Roll. It is a name thing. So that, from what I've seen, is that, I know, protect Jelly Roll at all costs. It's a naming thing. So it's a intellectual property. And we, we can take a look. Pat K, are you asked if I'm going to CrimeCon? Yes, I will be at CrimeCon. And we're going to do a Law Nerd meetup um, while CrimeCon is happening. Details TBD, but it'll be probably on the 31st. But as soon as I know, I will let you know. Uh, Brooklyn said, finally back to Catching Alive, just back from vacation. My boyfriend proposed in Joshua Tree. Joshua Tree is beautiful. Congratulations. Have fun. Remember, it is okay to be engaged for as long as necessary. It is a delightful time. Enjoy being affianced and um, have the best time. Um, Ponders, can I call y'all my brothers and sisters-in-law? Yes, Corky. <laughs> or at least for me, that's a yes. I will let the chat consent on, on their own terms. I will not presume to speak for all of the law nerds. Um, let's see, where is, where is CrimeCon? It's in Nashville. Um, so Jelly Roll Cakes existed before any band did. I'm fairly certain. Yes, it's always been a thing. Same with like Jelly Roll Pans. So it's, there's, there's lots of different things for Jelly Roll. Um, let's see. It just said the only person I will stop listening to TTPD for. Well, thank you. Um, appreciate it. Gold Dogs 3 said, how do I not find this community sooner? We're going to get a lot of those comments in the next eight weeks. Um, two years, congratulations. And look, this community is an amazing community. And we're here when you need to find us. So we're here. Courtney, happy birthday. I know we get a Friday, like a Friday casual day live. I need to go and check in on my kiddo. Covering the Chrisley defamation case that he lost. When we circle back to this appeal i will i will cover it in that it's just been um busy unfortunately can't wait to meet you in tennessee for my birthday chrissy same i'm glad you're here at the same time we've got stuff going on i there's a lot going on in the miraval angelina jolie brad pitt case it's going to be an upcoming podcast yellow pill said i've had a boss fired on the spot but disbarred question mark R rob stream tonight I was diagnosed with ADHD at 30, but the grief guilt, looking back at my life of what could have been was a long journey, lots of therapy. Franny, it's really hard. I get it. I get, I get it. I get it. There is a grieving period for the, if only I had known. Like, I, I wish I had known. If only I had known. Um, and unfortunately, we can't, we can't go back and look, but knowing hopefully helps. But yes, um, you know, that's a whole journey of like women not getting diagnosed with different neurodivergences the same way and getting told that, you know, they're fine. Connie said, after 12 years of being a massage therapist and now having a three-year-old and a three-month-old, I'm changing careers. Please wish me luck. I'm excited for the change, but absolutely terrified. That's exactly how I felt when I left the DA's office. I was nerve sighted and I was like, we'll figure it out. I'm like, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Daydream said that comparison made my IT heart happy. Ah, to the brains being different versions of operating systems. I mean, they all operate us. They're just different. Mama Wolf said my daughter with um, AUDHD has to have music on at all times. We figured it out a little over a year ago and it made an amazing difference. Finding the thing that works for your brain helps so much. Sometimes I joke about needing the hamsters on the wheel to just go do something else. I'm like, you go do that and let me focus. Sometimes it's movies, sometimes it's TV, but it's it's always something that I know because otherwise I'll, I'll miss information. Like if I'm trying to catch up on a, a show that I haven't seen or a new episode of reality TV, I'm like, wait, I missed something. Um, my brain is down to one of those LC, <laughs> LCD Tiger handheld games from the 1990s. <laughs> I feel that sometimes. Um, I like the idea that my bipolar means I have a dual operating system. Exactly, dual operating systems. And once you figure out which one you're operating in, you can address it, right? You can be like, oh, we've switched. 
systems. We're okay. That means we're here versus being over there. Um, Becca said, I haven't caught a live in so long. My twin sister and I are obsessed. Good to see you. Are you, will you cover the DOJ lawsuits against Ticketmaster Live Nation? Yes. When is the question at the moment? Tinsley, good to see you. You always teach me how my brain works. I turn all my backgrounds to black because the white screen does something to me. Oh, and hey, girl. It it does. The Sometimes the white screens or even white paper, like white, like black text on white paper, the white can be like perceived too, I, I don't know how to describe it well, but too starkly by our brains. And it makes it hard to see all the, um, all the, uh, all the text. So it is hard. Um, Poison Elf said, I have about 40 tabs open on AO3 ATM in three fandoms. <laughs> Better with the Irish said, son has Tourette's. His neck tick makes reading hard. School was tough. They have ADHD slash hard impulse control too. No swearing outbursts. So understating was how he's now a successful diesel mechanic at 27 because hands on works. Again, I love you sharing that. Figuring out how we work and the things that work for us matters. Um, Smurf Anna asked, what is the Erlen process like? So the Erlen, when you go in, there is like a screening to see if Erlen is something that is potentially an issue or not an issue with you. Um, and whether it, it, that's the factor or whether there's other things that's a factor. Like, is it a true visual issue? Is it a neurological processing issue, et cetera? And um, you go through that initial kind of testing. It was very clear to the provider early on that I was uh, Erlen. She's like, oh. There's like a self-survey and then an uh, uh, other testing. And then they go through a process of figuring out which filter combinations work in different settings. Mine are like gray and purple. Brian's are blue. Griffin's are more blue. Travis's are more amber. So there is a process of covering your eyes with the different um, filters and then going back through reading things or looking at things to see how your eyes react to it. And it's really helpful. So that is the process. It gave me a very, very bad headache doing the initial testing because I was looking at things that I normally would not look at and I avoid them because they hurt my eyes or my head. And then I was describing like where my eyes hurt, where my head hurts, where my eyes hurt looking at certain things, like feeling it behind your eye, things like that. And then screening for the different lenses. Some eye doctors have different types of lenses. What's difficult is that like a blue, like a blue light filter lens gives me a headache. So it's not all just wearing a darker color lens. But for me, like sunglasses kind of worked well because most of them are in the gray zone. But polarized glasses always gave me migraines. And I didn't realize it was because of the yellow in it. But like for Brian, dark sunglasses no matter what how dark they were never really helped because he needed that blue filter in it um witness said wait is that not normal your eyes shouldn't hurt when you do things so um he needed that blue filter behind his sunglasses to really make his eyes more comfortable and it got rid of the headaches but erlen is irlen.com they have self-tests on there you can talk to your optometrist you can find an erlen provider it is not sadly covered by insurance hopefully one day it will be but it's a way to start to learn um jesse ra 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 said i know this case is over but will you talk a bit about the fitness influencer Brittany dawn i did a while ago like if you search the name you should find the videos i covered it and i covered that it settled um so there's not much more to do on that but i had covered it um and i had covered the filings on it Haley from Toronto said, I quit my job today. Everything you said about ADHD makes me feel so validated, EDB. Thank you. I needed that. That's my brain 100%. You are welcome. Congratulations. On to different things that work very well. Yay. Um, so is Carrie Morrissey gone from the Baldwin case? No. Tina K.S. Lonard, thank you for the gifted memberships. Very much appreciated. Michelle, thank you for the gifted memberships. Um, sending lots of love to 
from a fellow NeuroSpicy in the UK. Have you seen Brit Smith and the Jojo drama over Karma? Is, I mean, I know somebody recorded the song before and then it was recorded by Jojo, but I didn't, if there is drama, I do not know. Um, I think my favorite re-record is the Toad one. Um, Kevin said the jump from one court case to the next is what ADB air is for. Exactly. So we, we don't miss a thing. Um, Becca said, so over Baldwin, I'm ready for the Idaho four trial. Well, hmm. it's going to be, it's going to be a while. I've been patiently waiting for your input. I ran to this live. Good to see you. And, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be a while. Kayla said, Emily talking about needing something on in the background while studying, working makes me feel so seen. You're welcome. And how, how many of us were told that like, no, you can't, you can't, you can't do that while you study. It's distracting to you. It's not distracting to me. I, I'm distracted without it. The Grey Witch said, EDB, I love this channel. Thank you. Also newly diagnosed with ADHD and it's been a struggle. Thank you for talking about it so openly and making me feel seen and understood. You're welcome. Look, we're humans. We learn through talking. We learn through making mistakes. We learn from sharing stories with each other, with each other, with each other. We, we should learn from other people's experiences. It's how we survived as humans. We learn from what others have done. So we don't have to keep reinventing the wheel or determining, you know, that if you eat that thing, it's going to kill you or whatever it is. This is how we learn. And I feel that it is so, Michelle Day, thank you for the gift of memberships. I feel that it is so important to continue sharing experiences, cases, things that we learn because it a helps us all connect to each other. B makes us feel a little bit less alone and C helps us learn. We learn from other people's experiences. And if you can't talk openly or ask questions genuinely, we're all going to stop learning and that's bad for all of us. Um, Christy said son is dyslexic and ADHD, super neuro spicy, hated reading in high school. Librarian found out he liked graphic novels, ordered the classics and graphic novel, and he loved reading. By the time he graduated, there was a huge selection. Christy, that's incredible. And it really does take people who are like, oh, I see you. Instead of being like, why can't you sit down and read the classics? It's like, oh, I see you. How can we get this information to you in a way that works for you? That's so special. Um, I love that his librarian took the time to say, let's find the way that works for you because that's making it accessible instead of just being like, eh, why can't you do it this way? A lot of us don't do things the same way and that's good. We shouldn't, um, Shane, it's <laughs> Shane, it's, <laughs> it's good to see you. It was not. Travis's guard that was holding up the books. <laughs> it was another guard. It I thought I made it clear, Shane, but if I didn't, I'm sorry. It's good to see you. It was it was another guard. It was not his instructor. His instructor would literally never. Um so it was funny. Michelle, thank you for the gift of membership. Shane, it's good to see you. Can you cover the lawsuit of Facebook sold DMs to Netflix? What? I will look for it. Maybe it'll be a podcast. We're um we're gonna we're gonna have to start putting things on the pod as we get into eight weeks of trial. The nice thing is that there this trial, though it's going to be long, don't keep singing, though it's going to be a longer trial. <clears throat> it's not gonna be every day, bro. I couldn't help that one though. I got past long, strong, and down to get the friction on, but I couldn't get past it's every day, bro. It's not gonna be every day, so we'll have some time. Um, so Gringa said I came here to learn, laugh, and sometimes cry. I tried not. Um, are you going to CrimeCon as an attendee? I don't see you listed as a creator or speaker. We have not made any announcements about that yet, Brittany, but I will be in the area. We will be doing a meetup and we will see. I have, I have had lovely chats with CrimeCon. Um, so. NC Horse Lover, glad to see you here for 14 months. This is very exciting. Um, to see all you guys who are members. I met my fiance playing Pokemon Go at work. I love that. Like, Look, there are there are lovely things to go find. I was mad I missed Lunatone because appendix. Uh, I get it. I don't. I need. Um, I still need the shinies. Oh, I thought you meant Jelly Roll pens. <laughs> no, the singer. Um, my flu-addled brain is glad y'all are here today. We're glad we're here with you, Autumn. 
Thank you guys for all of the lovely things. I cannot watch the news about these cases. Thanks, law nerds, for being so awesome. That's why we're here. That's why I'm protective of this, this community. Um, Rachel says, on the off days during care, we can cover Britney's trial coming up. I need, I need to pull documents. It is a tremendous amount, but yes, we will have a Britney um, episode probably on the pot up soon, summarizing before they go to trial. I don't know if I will be able to go be in trial in person um, for Britney's case. We will see. Is it possible they submitted this as an alibi so the defense didn't try to claim it was an alibi and block them from using it? I, music to my soul, I think that's probably exactly right. Um, that the defense didn't want the prosecution to be like, oh no, that actually is an alibi. You can't use it. I think it's an abundance of caution. It also allows the defense to get some of their side out. The prosecution has gotten to do that through like the probable cause affidavit. So I think fair and fair. 2011, I took my mom's Kindle to class with 50 shades. I used to read in class too, all kinds of stuff. Um, Tinsley said, my roommate, Mike said as a client account specialist, he hates collecting from clients on those billable hours. Yeah, it, I can imagine. Emily, will you give my fiance, Bob, a happy birthday? Shout out tomorrow is his birthday. Bob, happy birthday. Hey, Bob, Rebecca wants to wish you a special happy birthday. So I hope it is indeed a very special happy birthday to both of you tomorrow. Yay. Um, Pamela Lynn said, I like how dog owners know their dog's lineage and all the family members and us cat people are like, he's orange. I found him in my backyard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my gray cat, my orange cat, my tabby cat <laughs> found under a dumpster. It's fine. <laughs> and Janet Wing said, I use two strands of multicolor yarn together when crocheting. I think of my brain as this beautiful mess that creates a beautiful end product. I love that analogy. It's like, we're just going to weave it all we're going to weave it all together. <laughs> I love the chats talking about the cat distribution system. It's true. Uh, wouldn't the country, wouldn't the county be suing itself as she was a court employee? LJ Peach, the judge was elected, was a state official. And I don't know. I feel like at some point, her doing all of this, there needs to be more consequence. I might be totally wrong on that. That is just my gut feeling of like the, the level of fuckery. Like there's not even a question about the level of fuckery. Like shouldn't have to pay. It just offends me that the state of Oklahoma has to spend over $100,000 to yeet someone who is just ridiculous. Ice Ice, good to see you. We ride at dawn. Oh, we're definitely riding. We're definitely riding tomorrow. Uh, or not tomorrow, next week for trial. Maury, thank you for the gifted memberships. Um, Law nerds, for those of you that are members that have the tier with the Zoom calls, um, I had to move the Zoom call because of appointments. I apologize. So we have moved the Zoom call to May 4th at 2 p.m. Central. There's notices in all your member spaces. I will remind you in the app. Um, but we, I had to shift because the amount of appointments we have lately are challenging. So that is the heads up. I will, um, as we roll out other things in the app, we will be giving more access in different ways to Zoom calls with this community and for people to just opt into like a Zoom call when they have time. And so we've got, we've got stuff coming up. So on May the 4th, be with you, we will be together. Um, to have some time for the Zoom call. With that, I'm going to go check in on my kiddo and get some lunch. We've got a lot coming up next week. Uh, we have a lot coming up next week. S download the download the app. Download the app. Download the app. As we get into trial coverage, the schedule shift, and I can tell you what witnesses are on the stand as it's happening. Well. Me and the team can tell you what witnesses are on the stand as it's happening because there are things you're not going to want to miss and that will become more obvious as the trial goes on. There will be witnesses you don't want to miss and there will be some witnesses that's like, you know what, I'll pop back in later this afternoon and that's fine. It's the way we survive trial when things get busy. Law nerds, you're the best. I appreciate you. I will see you in the next one. I will see you on the Law Nerd app. I'm glad we got to have a little casual Friday. We got to chit chat, tell some stories. Get ready for trial, law nerds. It's, 
it's it's gavel to gavel time y'all and i will see you next week maybe on monday maybe on tuesday we'll just see what happens won't we and i will let you know in the app what we're doing um cv i appreciate the the marriage proposal i am i am spoken for and have been for quite a long time but i i appreciate the uh the, the the level of affection um very very well spoken for but thank you with all of that law nerds you're the best i adore you Ooh, y'all we're gonna we're gonna be just we're gonna be all facts no fuckery up in here and uh it's gonna be an interesting it's gonna be an interesting trial isn't it oh the fuckery can swirl elsewhere law nerds well law nerd and i will see you in the next one Bye, friends. You can stay up to date with everything I'm covering and fast notifications on our free iOS and Android app at lawnerdapp.com or search the app store for Lawnerd. You can also follow me around social media. And don't forget to check out my podcast, The Emily Show, with quick bits dropping every Monday, summarizing everything I do here on the live streams on Tuesday and Thursday for when you just have time for the quick bits. Thanks for being a Lawnerd. Nerd.